Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris Pia, Stratford Town Council Chairman. It is May 10th, 2021. It is, it is 6.45 p.m. I will call to order the public forum uh, for tonight's meeting. Uh, Ms. Paquette, um, do we have any callers on the list signed up? No one has signed up. Okay, no one has signed up. I'll keep it open for another minute and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, uh, are there any callers that have are on that have not signed up? Last chance for the public forum. Okay, Ms. Paquette, hearing none, I'll adjourn the meeting at 6.46 p.m. And we'll call back in for the regularly scheduled council meeting at 8 p.m. Thank you all. This conference will now be recorded. All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris Pia, Strat Town of Stratford, Council Chairman. Uh, today is May 10th, 2021. It is 8.05 p.m. I'm calling the regular scheduled meeting to order. Um, the first item on the agenda is going to be the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. Um, this month, it's, uh, it's my turn as we go in order. So I'd like to start out with, with a, uh, a Mother's Day prayer. Even though we're one day uh, removed from it, I'd like to wish a happy belated Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. And I thought it would be most appropriate to, to have a blessing in that manner. So. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for our mothers through whom your gift of life begins and through whom we are nurtured into great human beings. We lift up all mothers to your love and care. We pray for them, for their needs of strength and support to continue to nurture a family of love and honor and love for you. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you all. Um, first item on the agenda is approval of the regular, excuse me, approval of the minutes from the regularly scheduled meeting of April 12, 2021. I'll entertain a motion for, to approve. Laura Dantra, motion to approve. Motion by Ms. Dantra, thank you. Do I have a second? Second, second Miller, pardon. Uh, Mr. O'Brien, I heard you first, sir. Second by Councilor O'Brien. Um, any discussion? Nope, hearing none. We'll call to a vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. aye. Any opposed? No opposed, motion passes 10-0. Next item on the agenda under item, excuse me, under section three. Um, no actions needed. There's a letter of res resignation from Mr. David Durgey. Uh, next item is item 3.2, a our monthly TAN report. Ms. Savo, finance director, please. Thank you. I'm, I'm not sure if I have a delay or not, so I'm just gonna shut off my camera. No problem, Don. I can hear you nice and clear, so. Great, if you um, look at the cash flow report that we use for the TAN report included with your agenda, you'll see that um, our cash position is relatively the same, uh, close to what it was last last month. Uh, we're projected for the end of the year after uh, debt payments are made at the beginning of July to have a 10 million uh, cash balance. And um, we're on track with tax collection. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, I'll, I'll open it up to Ms. Davo uh, for questions regarding the TAN report. Uh, Craig can. Go ahead. Go ahead, Craig. Thank you, Chris. Hello, Don. Um, I did not find the April uh, TAN report, but in March we had a cash ex projected cash balance of about six million dollars, and as you've stated, it's now around $10 million. If uh, Two questions. One, what was our beginning of the year cash balance? 
and what accounted for that $4 million increase? So I don't have the, let's see. If you look at the first page on, um, on the report on 630, it's, it's not exactly the, uh, it's the, well, 630-2020 would be the end of the year balance, and that would be basically the same as the beginning of the current fiscal year. So that was last year's cash was 39, 242-249-76. Do you see that, Greg, on page one? Um, no, my page one starts with November of 21, but excuse me, February of 21. But we, we okay, started the year with a yeah, we, we started the year with a healthy cash balance, and that may have been due to early collections of this fiscal year's taxes. Uh, that was more due to cash on hand from high school bonding that we did the year before. There was a large amount of bonding that the town did. Okay. For capital projects. And the ex, the the growth of $4 million. So yes, so that's due to adjustments that we made in our estimates based on actual cash payments that had been received and what we estimate expenses to be through the end of the year. So if you look on the right hand side on page four, all the way near the end, we always put the totals in for the vendor check. So that went down slightly based on what we've been, you know, what actuals were coming in at. And um, also the, uh, the amount that we were bringing in for fees and some of the and the amount of um, the state receipts were were slightly increased in the so that's why uh, the amount fluctuated and in, in terms of the vendor thank you don just one more question please in terms of vendor payables uh, do we accrue for invoices written but not yet paid this is this is cash so we're only doing what what we're doing is actuals here so we're doing okay. estimates of what we think the cash outgoing will be and then we adjust it to what actual is after it happens so we're always adjusting the report to actual and then projecting what we think it will be. So this does not include accruals because it's just strictly cash. Okay, thanks for the opportunity to ask questions. You're welcome. Any other questions for Ms. Sabo for the TAN report? No. Okay, Dawn, thank you as always. Excellent job every month, we appreciate it. Um, uh, next item on the agenda is item 3.3. It's a presentation uh, by the town's auditors, uh, CLA, Clifton, Larson, and Allen. Um, I'm going to introduce, I'm going to have Ms. Sabo introduce them. Um, uh, and, but I'd like to just first start off with thanking them and, and welcoming them to, welcome to uh, our meeting. You've been in Stratford for, for some time now, but uh, we appreciate your work. Um, we're going to be, the way we're going to be doing this kind of similar to the way uh, Councilwoman Dancho did with the, excuse me, Councilwoman Dancho and Mr. O'Brien, Councilwoman O'Brien did with the Board of Ed Liaison on that audit. Um, I'm gonna ask the auditors to take 10 or 12 minutes um, to do the presentation uh, of which will be supplied to the council thereafter. Um, and then we'll open it up to the council uh, for questions. And I'd like to keep that to about a five or 10 minutes. If there's additional questions that arise, we can, I ask the councilors put it in an email and we will respond to accordingly. Um, so that way we keep everything moving. So, um, Ms. Sabo, I'd like to hand it to you or Mr. Timniak, whoever would like to introduce our auditing team. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Um, Council, Council Chair Pia. Sorry about that. Uh, I'd like to introduce our uh, audit principal and director, Vanessa Rosito and David Flint, who've been working with us for the past couple of years and. I'm happy that they could be at the at this um, 
meeting tonight, I understand that this is the first time they're presenting to the council uh, since they've been here. And, you know, I hope this is something that will, you know, I know that we're, um, the mayor wants to, you know, um, and the council are seeking more transparency. So I'm hoping that this will be something regular that they could do. And I just want to thank them for, um, you know, the job that they did this year on the audit, considering all the um, delays that we had. So I'll just turn it over to them to go through this, this um, presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Dawn. Um, I think I've been given rights to share my screen. So hopefully I didn't screw that up. Can everybody see that? Yeah, it looks good, uh, Ms. 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 Um, yes. Okay. Yes, Vanessa. So my name is Vanessa Rosito. I'm a principal at CLA and I have with me David Flint, who is a director at CLA. So we'll be going through the presentation. Okay, so as far as the agenda, we're gonna talk about um, the terms of the engagement. I'll give an executive summary and some financial highlights. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Dave, who's gonna go over the federal and state single audit, the internal control over financial reporting and the management letter. And then I'll wrap it up with the auditor's governance communication, just quickly talk about the laundry list of upcoming GASB statements and just a little bit about um, the new firm CLA. So what the town of Stratford has hired CLA to do was to express opinions on whether the basic financial statements are presented in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles, to express an in relation to opinion on the schedule of expenditures of federal awards and the schedule of expenditures of state financial assistance, and also to express an opinion on compliance with respect to those single audits. Um, in addition, we are providing a report on internal control over financial reporting and compliance with laws, regulations, contracts, and grants, and also report on internal control over compliance with the um, federal and state awards. So as far as the results, we have issued an unmodified opinion on the town's financial statements. This is the best opinion that you can receive. It basically means that your financial statements are correctly stated in accordance with the accounting standards. Uh, we did report a significant deficiency in internal control over financial reporting. Um, you know, the, the town went through a lot of changes this year with the um, finance director departing and Dawn taking over. Um, so there was a, a, a lot of um, delays. So we did report a significant deficiency. We will go over that or Dave will go over that in detail and we can answer questions afterwards. Um, as far as the federal single audit, we issued a qualified opinion on special education cluster in Title I because we did have a finding in, the, in compliance with respect to those programs um, and an unmodified opinion or a clean opinion on child nutrition cluster. And then for the state single audit, we issued a qualified opinion on LOSIP because we did have a finding with respect to special reporting and issued a clean opinion on the other programs. Again, Dave will be going over those in detail. So just some high level um, view of your financial statement. So on this slide, we are presenting the major funds of the town, which is the general fund and the capital projects fund. Um, I'm gonna focus on the bottom part of the slide. So the fund balance in the general fund increased about $857,000 from last year. And the capital projects fund balance did decrease $28 million from last year. And that's because there was significant amount of fund balance from last year because the town did bond for capital projects and did expend those funds this year. So it's a normal to see that, that decrease um, from last year to this year, but you did end the year with fund balance of five, about $5.3 million in the capital projects fund. 
and then a small decrease in the non-major governmental funds, which are the smaller funds of the town of about $3 million. Um, as far as the budget for the general fund, um, your budget for fiscal 2020 was 228 million. The revenues came in at 226 million, so $1,496,863 under budget. And expenditures also came in under budget by 2,953,825. So while your revenues did come in below budget, I think you did a good job of keeping the expenditures also below budget, and you did end the year with a budget surplus of $1.456 million. And just some other highlights I thought you might be interested in. Um, this past fiscal year, your property tax collections were 97.6% compared to 98.69%, so almost a 1% decrease, but understandable with respect to what um, everyone went through last year with the pandemic. Um, the town has a net pension liability of 43.8 million and the, fun the plan is 85.56% funded. You have a net OPEB liability of $275.9 million and that plan is 1.58% funded. And then this slide is showing the trust funds that you, where you do set aside monies for those um, liabilities. So the pension trust fund uh, did have a decrease in net position from last year to this year um, of about $10 million. You had contributions both from employees and the town of 6.6 .6 million. Um, you had net investment income of 6.375 million but you did have uh, deductions, which consists of benefits paid and other um, administrative expenses of 23 million. For the OPEB fund, you did have an increase in net position of about 429,000 from last year. Contributions from the employer were 9.3 million and benefits paid um, were 9.2 million. And I will turn it over to Dave to go over the federal and state and Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm going to start with the federal single audit. Um, now, the town expended a total of $6.3 million in federal awards in fiscal year 2020. For 2020, we audited three federal programs, the Special Education Cluster, which is also known as IDEA, Title I grants to local education agencies, and the Child Nutrition Cluster. So just to clarify, um, as Vanessa said, an unmodified opinion would be the best opinion one could get. The town received a qualified opinion and a material weakness in internal control over compliance for activities allowed and unallowed um, for the IDEA and Title I grant. This was a result of the Board of Education not maintaining pay rate approvals for each of its employees. Um, the town also received a material weakness in internal control over compliance relating to program eligibility for the child nutrition cluster. Um, this relates to uh, students who receive free and reduced price meals. And in our testing, uh, we noted that one student did not have an application on file. Um, you know, typically one application out of um, the sample that we test is not a big deal, but this is a repeat finding um, over the past two years. Moving on to the state single audit. Um, the town expended a total of $60.9 million in state awards for fiscal year 2020. And for 2020, we audited four state programs. The Local Capital Improvement Program, which is also known as LOSIP, the Urban Act Grant, Town Aid Road, and Municipal Grants and Aid. The town received a qualified opinion in a material weakness in internal control over compliance uh, related to the special reporting requirement for LOSIP. Um, so the town is required to submit to OPM form DE 2017 within 90 days of the fiscal year end. Um, and basically this form is an overview of the grant ex expenditures and activities. And we could not find any record of this form ever being submitted. 
Moving on to the next slide, um, it covers internal control over financial reporting. So just, just to clarify, the, the, the findings that I just discussed um, related to specific compliance requirements for each grant. In addition to those, there was a significant deficiency in internal control over financial reporting. And this applies to both state and federal single audits. Uh, specifically, this finding relates to general ledger maintenance and basically stems from the adjusting journal entries that we were required to make during the audit. So these items included um, difficulties in reconciling the Board of Education's general ledger to the towns. So since they're on separate accounting systems, the two, uh, the two general ledgers must be reconciled on a regular basis. Tax revenues collected per the QDS tax collection software were not reconciled to the general ledger. Uh, fund balance for some of the town's funds were not in agreement with the 2019 audit. Certain state and federal grants were in need of entries to properly defer revenue and record receivables. Fixed assets for the fixed asset module were not reconciled to the general ledger. And in addition, construction and process was not updated. For the waste operating fund, an unbilled SOAR receivable was not recorded uh, to account for variances in the billing cycle. Um, and finally, year-end closed entries were being booked through March 2021, which of course caused delays in completion of the audit. So basically, we lumped these items into one uh, finding that we uh, that we called the general ledger general ledger maintenance. And again, this was a finding an internal control over financial reporting. So moving to the next slide, um, this covers our management letter. So in addition to the items that I've already discussed, we also issued a management letter, which are basically just recommendations for improvement. And these items do not, they definitely do not rise to the level of a material weakness or a significant deficiency. So I'm just gonna go through those real quick. So first uh, we recommend that the town and the Board of Education develop a formal accounting procedures manual. Um, this will help with employee training, but most importantly, this will help when the town experiences employee turnover. Um, we also noted a segregation of duties issue within the finance department. And we think that the town should assess its internal control environment to make sure that there aren't any tasks that are completed by one individual. You know, in 2020, we identified some journal entries that were prepared without a second level of review. The town's interfund balances uh, are not being relieved and have thus grown quite large. Uh, we think that the town should analyze these balances um, and where applicable reimbursements should be made. The Workers' Compensation Fund, the Short Beach Golf Course Fund, and the Emergency Medical Services Funds are all in negative positions. Uh, the town should establish a long-term plan to fund these deficits. The activity uh, for the year for the pension and OPEB funds was not recorded to the general ledger system. This created difficulties when trying to reconcile the yearly activity to what the town's actuary was reporting. Also during the audit, we noted that the police department had an asset forfeiture bank account that the treasurer and the finance department did not have access to. The police chief was the only signer on this particular bank account. Finally, we, re we recommended that the town develop a formal encumbrance policy, which includes the definition of a properly executed encumbrance to ensure that they're recorded properly at year end. So that summarizes our findings. I'm gonna turn it back over to Vanessa now. Thanks, Dave. And I, I just wanna say that, you know, management is addressing these comments and, and did submit a corrective action plan. So I know you all have gotten a copy of the audit, um, so you should you should also have a copy of the corrective action plan. We could talk about that later also. Um, as far as the required auditor's communication, I'll just quickly go through these. There were no new standards adopted this year. Um, the GASB felt uh, pity on everyone due to the pandemic and did issue GASB Statement 95, which delayed implementation of all these standards. Um, there's various estimates uh, inherent in your financial statements, so we're required to look at these a little bit closer to ensure that management does not have any bias and is not overstating or understating any of these estimates so as to manage earnings, if you will. Um, so they're listed here. 
and we looked at all of these to ensure that they were fairly stated. Um, we did not encounter any disagreements with management during the audit. Management did not consult with another accountant for a second opinion. Um, there were audit extensions because, as I mentioned, it was a tough year for everyone, especially the town of Stratford Finance Department. Um, there were no uncorrected misstatements. Uh, I think the corrected misstatements were attached to this um, formal communication, um, which you all should have a copy of, and CLA is independent of the town of Stratford. So these three slides are just listing the GASB standards. I'm not going to go into them. If, if you are all interested, um, we could talk about them at a later date. And then just quickly, um, when we started the audit, we were Bloom Shapiro. We were purchased by CLA. Um, just to, to let you know, just a couple quick things about CLA. Um, CLA does serve about 4,000 government clients. They are actually the largest auditor of states. So it really means no changes to our clients. Um, the team, the audit team is still gonna be the same. It just really means more resources for our clients. Here's our contact information and I will open it up to questions. Okay, Vanessa. First off, thank you. And Dave, uh, thank you very much. We appreciate it. It's some great work. I looked at it over the weekend. Um, I'm going to open it up for uh, questions for the counselors. Um, it's 8.30 now. I'm gonna keep, I want to try to keep it to about 10 minutes on this. I'll give everyone the opportunity. And like I said, if there's follow-ups, I have no problem. We can get those emails to uh, uh, get those questions answered. So I'll open it up for the counselors. Any questions for Vanessa or Dave or Dawn? Um, Chris, Greg Cam. Right, Greg. Um, thank you. Uh, first, um, I don't recall receiving a copy of this audit report. It's different from the one that the BOE received. And just if Margo could resend it. Well, and I'll follow up with you on that. No problem. Thank you. And second, there was a mention about our tax collection rate. And I believe the audit was against fiscal year 2019 and we're in current year 2020 uh, the and we're also budgeting for next year uh, the decrease in the collection rate which would have started well can you do we have a historically good pattern of anticipating collections and do we have any run out through 2020 in regards to risk of collections. Dawn or Vanessa, I don't know who, Dawn, if you um, would like to answer. Oh, did you want to say something, Vanessa? Yeah, so the, the audit that we went over was the June 30th, 2020 audit. So that, okay. was, that was the collection rate for, you know, fiscal June 30th, 2020, which was the grand list of 2018, if that was your question, maybe. <clears throat> and a, a one-year trend does not create a pattern, but thinking of the current year and projecting into next year, um, do, do we, we have good habits regarding anticipating collection rates? I don't know. I don't know if the auditors can speak to that. What um, what I would say is when we are anticipating the uh, collection rate, we are also including um, in our budget funding for uh, non-current taxes and um, and other things that provide somewhat of a cushion if we don't meet our expected uh, percentage does that does that make sense to you greg um yeah that's it's, i'll just we'll just keep it in mind for the next 30 60 days but thank you don okay thank you um any other questions from any other counselors for vanessa or or dave or dawn 
on the on the capper. Chairman Pia. Yes, Caitlin, go ahead. You have the floor. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for the presentation. Um, you know, and in the spirit of transparency, I'm glad that we had this presentation for the council. Um, my question is: Is it possible um, for this report and the PowerPoint presentation to be posted onto our town website? Don't. Um, I'll. I'll jump in. Kate. I do believe that to answer your question, the, the report itself, I believe, is posted under finance. Do I? Yeah. Yes. Correct? The the CAFR is on the website uh, for the town under the finance department, along with mm -hmm. prior years. And I believe all the council members also received a copy of it via email a few weeks ago. So can we have the presentation that was just given to us posted onto the town website for the public to view and then have a better understanding also? Is that something we could do? Uh, I, okay. can't, I don't see why not. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Thank I mean, you. It was very helpful. So. Yeah, no, no. I, it, sorry, didn't want to cut anybody off. Um, give us, you know, give, give it a couple of days, but we, I don't see why not, and I'll make sure we work together on that. Thank you. I just also want to mention to Greg too, I just thought of this, that we did lower the collection rate for the current year we're in. Just, you know, as a reminder that you did do that when you passed the budget last year for the tax rate. Thank you. Any other questions from any other counselors? Um, Vanessa, just one quick for me. You use the word, and forgive me if, I, if I'm miscategorizing it, unqualified. Unmodified. Unmodified. I'm sorry. It used to be unqualified. They changed it to unmodified. It means the same. Okay. And in 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 the realm of, of 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 the lingo that we're discussing, that's a. It seemed like it was a pretty good thing, and you obviously gave recommendations that everybody should always strive to improve upon. Um, but all in all, it looked it it was unqualified. It was unmodified. It, it was in good shape. Decent shape. Yeah, the financial statements, we issued an unmodified opinion. So the financial statements are fairly stated. We did have, you know, um, things that we saw in internal controls, which we made recommendations about, but but like I said, management is addressing them. Um, and we will, you know, work with management. If you all have questions on them, if we can help in any way, please just let us know. We appreciate it. And from the council side, I, I know I've spoken with the administration. They've They've uh, been appreciative of your guys' guidance on this, and they said that you've been very professional to work with, so thank you. Yep, yes, our pleasure. Um, any other questions before we move on? As I said, if any counselors have any further questions, I would ask that you put those in an email to, to Ms. Savo, um, who can get it to, to the auditors. But um, with that, we'll move on, and uh, we appreciate both of your time. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, next item on the agenda is the mayor's report, 4.1. Madam Mayor, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, Council Chair. So, uh, Town Hall has been reopened as of May 3rd with the public um, no longer needing appointments. While we're pleased that we made this change, it is recommended that um, people use the operations as we have online if they can or go through mail or phone but everybody's welcome and it's nice to see friendly faces in the building. The governor has announced changes to executive order restrictions as of May 1st. The curfews for restaurants, entertainment venues, recreation venues, and theaters have been moved back one hour to 12 midnight. Bars that do not serve food can open for outdoor service only. Food is still required when serving alcohol indoors. The eight person table limit has been lifted outdoors only. The limit remains in effect for indoor dining. Effective um, this Wednesday and um, Wednesday the 19th, all remaining business restrictions will end. The Connecticut Department of Public Health will issue recommendations for indoor and outdoor events, including concerts, etc. And indoor masks will continue at this point. Though so Dr. Fauci said CDC may modify those um, guidelines going forward in the near future. We continue to hold vaccination clinics at Bird's Eye Center every Wednesday from 9.30 to 3.30 p.m., and that'll continue through May 26th. The clinics are now walk-in and do not require appointments ahead of time. 
The clinics are for those 18 years and older, and we are currently administering Johnson & Johnson and Moderna vaccines. Uh, currently, only the Pfizer vaccine is approved for those younger than 18. And you heard today that it's been released that um, Pfizer is available for those 12 to 15 years old. <clears throat> As part of the Vaccine Equity Partnerships Program funded by the Connecticut Department of Public Health, the Stratford Health Department will transition the regular weekly COVID-19 vaccination clinic operations at their main site to a community-based pop-up clinic format beginning in June. As part of the new initiative, the Stratford Health Department will partner with Hartford Healthcare, Yale New Haven Health, as well as local organizations, including Sterling House, the Stratford YMCA, the Southland Community Center to promote COVID-19 vaccine, COVID vaccine and to host neighborhood level clinics. Outreach will focus on the areas of town that have experienced a disproportionate burden of disability and disease due to the COVID-19 pandemic. To date, we've had approximately 10,700 people uh, vaccinated in the Stratford clinics. The state is releasing information about how many individuals have been vaccinated in Connecticut. Um, as of May 5th, 2021, 48.52% of the town's population has been vaccinated with the first dose. The Stratford, uh, the state of Connecticut is maintaining the color-coded weekly COVID alert map tracking the average daily rate of COVID-19 cases in the community settings. The town of Stratford remains at the red level along with 50 other, 54 of the other state's 169 communities. We are at 20.1 cases per 100,000 people as over the time period of April 18th through May 1st. This represents 7.8 cases per 100,000 people. On April 30th, I had the pleasure of celebrating Arbor Day at Juliet Low Park and thanking our friends at Razor's Edge Tree Service for their generous donation of over $15,000 of tree and grounds work. And they were joined by our public works tree crew to make improvements, remove dead trees, and to plant new ones. I also presented the town's proclamation for the Arbor Day at this event. Guests at the event included Town Councilor Paul Tavares, State Representative Joe Gresco, Town Councilor Bill O'Brien, Public Works Director Renee Serra, Conservation Superintendent Kelly Kerrigan, as well as Cassandra Bryant, Ray Boychu, and Matt Hurley from Razor's Edge. Many thanks to Razor's Edge and our own Public Works team for their hard work making the improvements at the park on Arbor Day. Also associated with Arbor Day, we had a tree planting at Our Lady of Peace Church on April 29th. Three town-owned long-established silver maples in front of the church needed to be removed due to damage sustained during tropical storm ICAS. If I said that right. Let me see. Let me try it again. I, ECAS. During a brief ceremony at the church this morning, I was joined by Town Council Chair Chris Pia, State Representative Joe Gresco, Father Nicholas Pavia, Beautification Co-Chair Christine Griffin, Fire Chief uh, Brian Lampart, Conservation Supervisor Kelly Kerrigan, Public Works Director Renee Sarah, and the Public Works crew that installed the three new trees on the church grounds. Father, Father Pavia delivered a blessing of the new trees. He also blessed our public works crew because we all need it. And the trees are two dogwoods and a sugar maple. Longbrook Park cleanup, the annual cleanup of Longbrook Park organized by the Longbrook Park Commission took place on Saturday morning, May 1st. I was pleased to visit the members of the Longbrook Park Commission and numerous volunteers who came up to help beautify the park. Thanks to counselors, Caitlin Shake and Bill Perillo and the commission for organizing the cleanup. The Stratford Green Sweep and Housatonic River Green Sweep was also took place on May 1st. Many thanks to the volunteers who joined the Birdside Boat Ramp to clean up along the river and the points throughout town. Special thanks to our Harbor Waterfront Management Commission, Conservation Commission, and our Conservation Superintendent Kelly. I think I've given you three different names today. Um, Kelly Kerrigan, this was her first year organizing the cleanup and she did a great job. Last month, in advance of Earth Day, I was pleased to announce the partnership between the town, the school system, and Bay State Textiles to, to place textile recycling collection bins at the school locations throughout Stratford. Residents can deposit their post-consumer textiles, including clothes, shoes, linens, plush toys, in the bins for recycling, with the proceeds set to benefit the school at which they are located. As you're all aware, the town previously had an arrangement for curbside textile recycling with a company which had to end during this, the pandemic. So we're pleased to get back into the business of recycling textiles and reducing significant bulk waste in our stream while supporting schools, our school students along the way. 
Bins are now located at each school next to their dumpsters, and the proceeds again are going back to the schools where the textiles are dropped off. The town, in collaboration with the police department, community and senior services, health department, housing authority, YMCA, St. James and Sterling House Community Center, delivered fresh food boxes to residents in need free of charge on April 22nd at four locations, Gregory Circle, Holy Name of Jesus Church, Bird's Eye Complex, and Baldwin Center. Many thanks to all the staff and volunteers who made this program possible. Stratford is a recipient of the 2021 Insurifies Fitness Fittest Cities Award based on the town's commitment to supporting the community health and fitness. One community is selected in each state each year, with Stratford being selected as the winner for Connecticut this year. The data scientists at Insurify analyze cities in which in the state for the availability and accessibility of outdoor recreation facilities and for the proportion of the community members working in jobs that promote health and fitness or that demand significant physical activities. Stratford maintains, Stratford maintains a tremendous variety of opportunities for outdoor activity and recreation, especially during this COVID year. And it was a pleasure to have the town recognized by Insurify as the fittest city in Connecticut this year. I was three to, thrilled to join Brad Hiddle and all the great people at Two Roads and participate in the ceremonial tapping of the first keg of Herzaner Maybach beer this season, and that happened last Thursday. As far as Stratford Strong News, 27 businesses will be approved for the CDBG grant for microenterprises receiving $10,000 each, reaching the $270,000 allotted for the microenterprise grants. 13 businesses were denied due to either delinquent taxes, too many employees, or not falling within the mod, low mod criteria. 1000 East Broadway Center School property, the RFP was released on May 4th with submissions due on June 22nd. The Complete Streets meeting is going to be held shortly uh, to review comments from DOT. This meeting will be similar in format to the one that was held last October when the same members reviewed the feedback uh, we received from DOT for our 30 sets for submission. Is going to begin in 2022. Uh, Family Dollar and Dollar Tree have an opening set for May 15th. The Frontier Building on 1175 Wood End Road was purchased by Core One for 7.2 million. Nikki's Beach House Restaurant at Doran Drive is open for business. There will be a virtual public informational hearing hosted by the State Department of Energy and Environmental Protection, DEEP, uh, to review the draft stewardship permit renewal for the Stratford Army Engine Plant. That will be held on May 12, 2021, beginning at 6 p.m. The information is on the website. The stewardship permit purpose is to require the completion of investigation, remediation, and long-term stewardship requirements including monitoring of the environmental conditions, engineered controls, and institutional controls as applicable. The permit requires financial assurances and public participations in final remedy decisions. The stewardship permit en ensures that the statewide environmental remedy remains effective into the future. This is an important step in moving forward on the remediation of the contamination at the site so redevelopment can take place. Supporting documents for the deep hearing are on the town website, and I urge all who's interested to participate in the hearing. Stratford Restaurant Week will take place on Sunday, May 16th through Saturday, May 22nd. For more information about all of our great participating residents, please visit, visit our Celebrate Stratford site at celebratestratford.com. This year, the Golden Fork Award is making its debut, the Restaurant Week debut. You can visit by either uh, you can enter by visiting a participating restaurant and then sending a picture of your receipt. And you'll have a chance to win hundreds of dollars or worth of Stratford restaurant gift cards. Booth Memorial Park will be having its open day ceremony on May 16th, 12 to 4 p.m. There will be an antique car show, a historic building tour, flag raising ceremony, balloon man and blacksmith demonstration, among other attractions brought to, brought to us by the Friends of Booth. Police Activities League is hosting its Come Fish with a Cop also on May 16th. The event is free and spaces are limited. Participants must be 15 years or old or younger. And to register, uh, please contact K9 Officer Diaz at J D S D I A S at townofstratford.com. 
The Stratford Clergy Association, in conjunction with the Town of Stratford, will host its COVID-19 memorial service on Saturday, May 29th at Town Hall Green. The ceremony will begin at noon. In conjunction with the VFW, the, Stratford, the Town of Stratford will be holding its Memorial Day ceremony and parade. These events will take place on Memorial Day Monday, May 31st. The ceremony at Academy Hill will take place at 11 a.m. and this parade will step off at 12.15 p.m. I'm pleased that once again we can resume our town's traditional recognition of those who have served and made the ultimate sacrifice defending our nation in times of armed conflict. Stratford Main Street Festival is set to take place on June 5th from 10 to 5 p.m. on Main Street from Stratford Center to Stratford Avenue. The event brings over 140 local vendors, bands, entertainment, food trucks, booths, and artists, and is organized by the Stratford Rotary Club and sponsored by the Milford Bank. I was pleased to join the great team at Shannon Landscaping Friday afternoon for a ribbon cutting celebrating their new expanded location at 111 1111 Honeyspot Road, along with the town council members, Bill O'Brien, Chris Pia, State Representative Joe Gresco, and State Representative Phil Young. During their grand opening over Mother's Day weekend, they donated $1 to Stratford's police activity for every tree and shrub sold. Shannon Lawn and Landscaping is a family owned business that started in 1987. It's owned by Michael Shannon, his wife, Christina, and Michael's brother, John Shannon, all of Stratford. They currently service over 2,000 customers and employ 35 people in our community. At the end of April, the town uh, lost one of its most experienced and professional team members as Zoning Enforcement Officer John Rosatsky retired after 28 years of dedicated service to our community. John ha has a wealth of knowledge and experience in his field that is unmatched. We thank him for his years of service and we wish him all the best as he embarks on retirement and spends more time with his family and loved ones. I'm also pleased to recommend to the Town Council this evening the appointments of Maureen Millward Booth to the Booth Park Commission, Ryan Ehrenhaus reappointed to the Historic District Commission, and Megan Merwin appointed to the Historic District Commission from alternate to full member. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's my report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, we'll open up for questions to the mayor. Uh, do any councilors have any questions for, uh, for our mayor? Uh, Greg. I can. Yep, just heard you. Go ahead, Greg. Thank you, Chris. Hello, Mayor Hoydick. Uh, I previously submitted two questions, but I have two others. Um, one is related to the tree planting, which is a fantastic thing. Uh, we planted trees a few years ago in some of the town parks, and I'd say half of them have since died. Do we have a mechanism to monitor the trees and maybe increase their survivability? So, Councillor, I don't know what trees you're talking about, but if you could um, provide that information, I can check on them and get back to you. Um, certainly. During the past four years, I've presented various rationales regarding the Register of Voters Office, uh, given arguments to make it more budget sensitive regarding our peer towns. Uh, earlier this year, the ROV did downsize to three employees and it successfully ran the November 2020 election. And we've recently learned that it's doubled the number of transactions uh, that it was able to execute to quote, clean the voter roll, rolls, to clean the voter rolls. So using this as an example of increased productivity, have we learned of other departments where efficiencies can be created? So we learn of other um, departments all the time where efficiencies are created and expedited. And we've discussed those in our budget workshops. Do you have anything in particular you'd like to ask? Yes. I'll move on to the next two questions, please. Uh, local authorities sometimes cannot resolve conflicts. It could be a business, it could be a municipality. Do you support an individual right, an individual's rights to engage with agencies such as CHRO to file complaints and request investigations? So, Councillor, I believe what you're asking me is, do I subscribe to the letter of the law? The answer is yes. And maybe when you were in Hartford, you will recall Public Act 1667. It was effective in 2016. 
It requires school districts to collaborate in documenting employee work history and participate in background checks on potential new hires. Do you see this as a good move or as an unnecessary mandate? So, Councillor, did I vote for it in 2016? I guess it sounds like you know that I did. Um, and so I would, unless there's additional information brought forward where it is not prudent and has proven um, not conducive to better operation, I would continue to support it, unless you have information that you'd like to share. No, there's just some dispute among some individuals in town whether it's an appropriate statute. Uh, I'm glad for your reassurance and I'll send you some photos of the trees. Thank you. And reassurance on, you're glad for my reassurance on what, Councillor? On your statement regarding the statute that requires background checks and voter history to be maintained for employees of the Board of Ed. Voter history is part of the statute. I'm going to ask the town attorney if you wouldn't mind it. It doesn't have to be right the second, but maybe at the course during the meeting, you can <clears throat> educate uh, all of us on the statute and its and its direction. So I can assure the counselor that I'm answering his question appropriately. Sure, we'll look at that. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Any any other questions for the mayor? Any other questions? Uh, Caitlin, you just pop on? Yes. Yep. Go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor Hoydick. Good evening, Caitlin. Um, I have, of course, a question about uh, COVID-19 and um, not pop-up testing sites, but um, regarding vaccinations. Um, I'm very happy that we finally have uh, some type of uh, partnership with local healthcare networks coming in to help us to essentially better serve our residents here and make sure everyone is protected and healthy. Um, my question is regarding, um, I'm not asking for a list of names, but I am curious to know what the percentage of our town hall employees are regarding their uh, vaccination status. If they're fully vaccinated, if they've had one dose um if that could be emailed that would be great and extended then to dpw um and there was an article recently i forget if it was the connecticut post uh that had talked about our police department um so if that's possible to have that information um emailed for review again not a list of names just the percentage of employees whether they're full-time, part-time, per diem. So all of our EMTs, and that's where we have per diem, uh, and EMS um, work, uh, workers, paramedics, et cetera, are all vaccinated. Um, so that's a, high, a very high percentage. Uh, Ron, are you on the call? I am. Would you answer the councilwoman's um, Yes, I don't have the total percentage of uh, in front of me. I can certainly get that to you folks, but we do have a, I would say from the response that we got, because there, there's a requirement uh, for the town to mandate uh, someone giving us their information to verify if they've been vaccinated or if they had one shot or not. Um, it's very uh, delicate, if you will. Uh, we have made a request for employees to provide the town with their vaccination certificate. Um, and so we have received some, I don't, you know, again, it's very hard to make everybody give it to us um, because it is a touchy situation, uh, but I can get the data for you and it can email out to the council. Andrea just uh, reminded me that the health department is 100% vaccinated. Thanks, Andrea. Thank you. I just wanna respond if that's okay. I just have a follow-up question. Go ahead, Kim. Thank you. Um, you know, in terms of the part of the reason for my question um, is I'm glad that we, um, you know, as a state have made significant progress um, and that we're able to open up and enjoy, you know, being together in, in 
person for the most part. Um, but you know, in order to do that safely, really, as Andrea knows, who's on the line, you, we need to have a certain percentage um, of people fully vaccinated. So, you know, moving into summer, springtime activities, um, just so we have a better idea of what the percentage is, um, I, I think it would be helpful and help build com hopefully confidence um, within the community that we're all participating um, and moving in a direction to help protect and keep each other safe. So thank you. Any other questions for the mayor? Uh, no other questions, I believe. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. We appreciate it. Welcome, Council Chair. Uh, okay, next item on the agenda uh, is going to be, in, oh, for the record, and um, um, that was Mr. Uh, Ron Ng who spoke before in, in, uh, uh, that provided a response to Councilwoman Chase's question, HR Director. Uh, thank you. Just want to make sure it's good for the record for those listening. Um, next item on the agenda is item 4.3.1, uh, an ordinance. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Mr. Chairman, this is Laura Dancho, and I motion to approve item 4.3.1, an ordinance amending sections 6-5, 6-10, 6-11, and 203-8 of the town code, which is regarding parking, parking ticket enforcement. Hold on. Wait a second, I'm not done. And uh, that the second reading of this ordinance be dispensed with as copies have been provided and that the same be adopted as a second reading and the foregoing be and is hereby approved effective 30 days from now. Okay, motion by Councilman Bancho. Do I have a second? Second, Dave Harden. I have a second by Councilor Harden. Uh, discussion. Uh, is there any discussion on this? Uh, Gregory Cam. Greg? Go ahead, Greg. Thank you, Chris. Is Mr. Timiak on the call? Mr. Timiak is on the call, and Mr. Attorney Florek is on the call, who helped draft it if you have questions for them. Okay. Yeah, these are, these are the questions that I believe the record will show I asked at the last town council meeting. One was, I'm going to go down to section 6.5, the application for a hearing. Uh, we had asked for a copy of the application, and we had asked, what is the we'll call it the defendant. Uh, how is the, the defendant obligated to respond to the application for hearing? And how are they to learn of the application for hearing? Mr. Timniak, Mr. Florek, if you'd like to be yeah. you guys. I'll defer to Mr. Florek. This is the one this is the one question out of the list you had, Greg, which I um, I did not get follow up on. So I'll defer to uh, attorney Florek. So, uh, Mr. Ken, uh, John Florek here. Uh, what happens uh, as far as uh, notification is that the the application that you refer to is, is an application that comes from the police department uh, to the uh, citation clerk. And of course, since this ordinance is not yet effective, there is no application right now. However, if you look at the ordinance 6.5, it's very specific as to the information that's going to be in that application. So that goes from the police department to the citation clerk. 6.6 um, .6, which we have not touched, so it doesn't appear before you, is the, uh, is the ordinance which uh, talks about how the defendant uh, receives notification. And basically what happens is the citation clerk sends a, a notice uh, by uh, first class mail uh, to the uh, uh, defendant. It, uh, it uh, discloses to the defendant uh, what the violation is, uh, what the fine is. The, um, the defendant has a right to a hearing it indicates that if the uh, hearing is not requested, uh, that a judgment in the amount of the fine uh, will be assessed against the defendant. Uh, that goes out by first class mail. Um, and of course, if the defendant requests a hearing, 
um, then that hearing is scheduled and the defendant is notified again by first class mail. Uh, perfect. Uh, thank you, Attorney Florek. Any other discussion on the item? Nope. Okay. So, um, being that this is the path, final passage of an ordinance, we're going to be having a roll call vote on it. Uh, so, I'll hand it over to Council Clerk, Ms. Piquette. This is Margo Paquette, the council clerk, and this is the roll call vote for agenda item 4.3.1.1. Ms. Shake. Yes. Mr. Tavares. Yes. Mr. Harden. Mr. Harden votes yes. <laughs> Mr. Can. Yes. Mr. Poisson. Yes. Mr. Perillo. Yes. Mr. Connor. Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Ms. Dancho? Yes. Chairman Pia? Chair votes aye. That's a 10-0 vote. Thank you, Ms. Paquette. Uh, vote is unanimous. Thank you all. Next item on the agenda is item 4.3.2 under the Public Works Committee. I'll entertain a motion. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, this is Bill O'Brien. Mr. O'Brien. And I am... Um... Move that Boz Quality Works change order in the amount of $11,880 for excess soil removal be and is hereby approved. Can we do this together? If you'd like to make that motion, sir. Okay, and move that STV, additional work provided by STV to revise the FEMA LOMR for Tanner's Brook in the amount of 28000 be and is hereby approved. Okay, so motion by Councilor O'Brien for 4.3.2, items A and B. Second. Second by Dave Harden. Second by Councilman Harden. Uh, any discussion on the item? Everything was discussed and noted in public works, which was recruited in the pony. Any councilors have any questions? Nope. Hearing none, we'll call it for a vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Motion passed by unanimous at 10 0. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is item 4.3.3 under building needs. I'll entertain a motion. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Councilor Poisson. I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, 4.3.3A, uh, Turner Change Order 315. It's a credit in the amount of $248,927. Motion to approve item 4.3.3A. I'll entertain a second. Second by Dave Barton. Ms. Dancho, I heard first. All right, I heard Ms. Dancho. Uh, so second is made by Councilwoman Dancho. Uh, any discussion on the item? Um, Greg Can. Greg, go ahead. Thank you, Chris. Just a, a general question uh, regarding the high school project uh, for Mr. Poison, probably. Uh, when do we expect on-site work to be completed? Uh, within two months. Okay, thank you. Any discussion on item A? No, hearing none, we'll call item A to for a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Your votes aye. Any opposed? No opposed motion passes unanimously. 10 0. Mr. Poisson. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve item 4.3.3B. Uh, it's a project adventure equipment for the auxiliary gym in the amount of $51,120. Motion to approve item B by Mr. Poisson. Do I have a second? Greg Cam. Greg, uh, Mr. Cam, on the second. Any discussion for this item? Nope. Hearing none. We'll call for a vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Motion passes in the end. 10 0. Next item. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve item 4.3.3C. Uh, it's another credit from Antonazzi in the amount of $27,545.01. Motion to approve item C. Do I have a second? Caitlin Shake, second. 
Councilwoman Shake on the second. Do I have any discussion on this credit item? No? Okay, uh, no discussion, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? No opposed, motion passes unanimously, 10-0. Next item. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to strike from the agenda item 4.3.3D. Okay, motion to strike item 4.3.3D. Do I have a second? Second, Bill O'Brien. Seconded by Councilor O'Brien uh, for discussion. Uh, Mr. Timiak, this was, I know it's something that came up just uh, recently, but if you can give some clarity on it. Uh, or Madam Mayor, if you'd like, if, Madam Mayor, if you'd like. Yeah. Yeah, Chris, if you don't mind, I'll um, yeah, go I'll ahead. take first and then defer to Dawn. So at the meeting, when we were discussing this um, this proposal, I was we were all concerned because of the um, the closeout of the project would be delayed if we were going to continue this and the photovoltaic field as part of the project for the next few several months. So. Um, Dawn um, Savo, our finance director, was in contact with her representative from DAS School Construction Division, and they would like to close out the account, the project earlier. So Dawn, if you can give some more detail to that, that would be appreciated. Sure, thank you, Mayor. So the uh, the contact uh, had given, had actually uh, reached out to me because uh, the state received some information that the project would be extended due to the photovoltaic and they had other applications from the state, um, from the town, I'm sorry, on other roof projects that the council had approved that we would be doing the photovoltaic. And so in their, um, view, they would like to close out the project and then put the photovoltaic on a separate project for Stratford High School. So we'll still be getting the school construction funding for the project, but it will not come under the Stratford High School project. And their reasoning for that is they are trying to push to get the project to close out earlier. And I think that would be in the benefit of the town since, as you know, we did authorize bonding for the retainage that the state holds back until the project is closed out and audited, and we are paying interest on that. So the rate that we are currently getting with the high school for the reimbursement rate is 60.36%, and as doing the project separately, we'd be getting 59.64%, which is less than 1% difference, and it's about $6,000 difference. So we're saving in my estimation, the cost of the funding, the debt that we ha have incurred for the project longer, and also for extending any contracts. Is that, is that a good explanation? Uh, Dawn, that makes sense to me. Uh, are there any other counselors that have any questions on since we're in discussion on this item for, for Ms. Sago on this one? Great. Read. Well, no, just uh, it was a good explanation. And uh, how do you say uh, reactive planning, circumstantial? Good job. Yep, Dawn, excellent observation as always. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for that. Um, being that there's no other further discussion, we'll uh, again, we're the motion just for the record again was to strike the item. Uh, so we will move forward with a vote to strike item D. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? Uh, Mr. Tavares, do you oppose? Yeah, I'm going to abstain. I understood for, because the photovoltaic. Yep, and you have precedent on that. So no, no opposed. One abstention by Council Tavares, Mr. Piquet. So the vote goes 9-0-1. Thank you all. Um, next item on the agenda is item 4.4, Town Attorney's Report. Mr. Hodson. 
you know, just to change things up, I do have a report this evening. Um, I spoke with the mayor and she thought it would be helpful for the council for me each month to highlight some of the activities of the town attorney's office. And I think that's a great idea. So for uh, in April, for fees and costs recovered in two real estate foreclosure matters, uh, our office was able to recover the sum of $8,655 and in another foreclosure, the sum of $3,574. In addition, for blight properties, the total liens and costs recovered was $6,520. We handled general liability claims, which include um, WPCA sewer backup and also property damage claims such as potholes. We settled six individual claims for a total of $7,093. The high settlement was $3,400 and the low was $219. In addition, we have five new tax appeals that came in and those were assigned. We have four real estate matters on the agenda this evening, which we'll discuss in executive session. And uh, that is my report. I look forward to reporting each month along these lines. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hot. Thank you, Attorney Hotson. Appreciate it. Um, next item on the agenda. Oh, Chris. Under... Greg, Chris. yes. Yes, uh, an opportunity to discuss or to ask questions. Uh, I'll allow it for, for anything that he reported on. I'll allow it for anything he reported on. Go ahead. Anything he reported on. Uh, it was a question that I submitted earlier today. I was hoping to get a response because it's relevant to an agenda item. If it's an item, I know that you had several questions Councilman Can, um, with respect to, uh, you had an ethics question, a library well, board question, uh, yes. another ethics question regarding preferential treatment, and then a question regarding home rule and the 2017 tax relief fund. Mm -hmm. So we can defer all of those except the library board. Did the town attorney's office come to any determination that the board is in violation of state? I believe we have an agenda item on that for an appointment later in the agenda. Yeah. If we, Greg, I'm not, I'm not trying to cut you off, but anything, any question that pertains to any agenda item, I'd like to just, we can have the discussion under that item. I have no problem having the, the attorneys answer your question. I just want to keep everything in sync. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Um, thank you, Attorney Hassan. Thank you. Next time. Next item on the agenda is item 6.2.1. Just double checking myself. Uh, I entertain a motion for a resolution there. Chair. Six. Started. What did you say? Uh, yeah. 6.2.1. Uh, a resolution uh, regarding the annual action plan for the program year 47. Community Development Block Grant. CDBG funding. Uh, here, right, here uh, it be resolved that the purpose action plan for program year 47, as summarized in the attached hereto, be adopted by the town council as a town action plan for the community development year 40, 47. Okay, motion by um, Greg. I'm getting a lot of feedback on you right now. Oh, sorry. Um, let me mute. Uh, motion Mr. by Mr. Councilor Harding. There's further language in, regarding the resolution that I think should be moved as well, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Harding, if you'd like to continue per the town attorney's request, sir. And before they resolve that, Laura Mayor Hordick, the town, of, uh, town hall, 2725 Main Street, Stratford, is hereby authorized to officially represent the town of Stratford and submit the action plan for the program year 47 uh we did uh revisions uh amendments thereto and understanding certificates and insurances containing therein to provide any additional information which may be required by hud so that the town may receive the community development block grant uh grant year 47 funds okay motion by councilman harden do i have a second for for the item 
Laura Dancho second. I'll second that. Ms. Dancho, I, I heard you first on that one. Um, any discussion on any discussion on, on the item? Uh, Greg can. Bye, Greg. Thank you, Chris. I just want to thank the CDBG committee and all the applicants for making this a productive process on behalf of the town. Any other discussion on the item? No problem. Any other discussion? Nope. Okay. Um, thank you for everybody's work. We'll, we'll move this along. We'll call for a vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All right, Chair votes on. Any opposed? No opposed. Motion passes unanimously. 10 0. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is item 6.2.2. I'll entertain a motion. Bill Perillo. Councilman Perillo. On the motion like, for 6.2.2. Yes, I'd like to accept the resolution regarding the vaccine equity partnership funding. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, I'll entertain a second. Caitlin Shake, I'll second. Uh, Councilwoman, Councilwoman Shake uh, on the second. Um, any discussion on the item? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Tavares, go ahead, sir. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to have an idea of getting um, some data on uh, all 10 districts and speaking for any other counselor that would like to have, uh, maybe this is a question for the, the health department. But uh, I would just like to have an idea of how many people in Stratford, especially, have been vaccinated, uh, whether they had their first or second dose, uh, and even those have yet to have a dose. Um, Councilwoman Shake has been going around doing door knocking and feel like I've been one up. I want to make sure that not only my district, but in other districts are being equitably served and uh, making sure that not only are we getting the word out, but still, you know, assisting the health department and all those to uh, to, to really get this uh, vaccination program going. So would that be something that would be made available where I can get some of the numbers in the districts? Um, people that are vaccinated? Ms. Yep, hang on one sec, Mr. Uh, Mr. Tavares, so, excuse me. Uh, Ms. Ms. Boisevain, I don't know if you have uh, information for Mr. Tavares' request tonight or if that's something you need to follow up with. Uh, I'm going to have to follow up with because I, I have data that's uh, for, for Stratford, but they have not um, broken it down by by address. Um, and so I'm, I'd have to see if they could go to that to that level, you know, in terms of having it district wide. Um, but they don't they don't report that data um, in, in that in, in that way. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a good question. They do they do break it down by age. So while the average for the town is uh, coverage is 48.52%, um, our uh, and now they collapse the uh, the data for 65 and over, but they used to report out 75 and older, and our 75 and older is 95% covered. Um, but now when they collapse the nine, the 65 and 75 year olds, that's almost 81% coverage. And then the 45 to 64 year olds are 62.4%. Um, and then 15 to 44 year olds, we have a 42, 42.3% uh, 42 coverage. Um, yeah. Thank you, Andrea. But the, you're saying that that could become available as far as by district also? I, I don't I don't believe so. We can we, we can see at the state, but the state only um, does it by um, by town. They don't actually break it down. Um, and what's also frustrating is that the state doesn't break down race um, and ethnicity issue. They just report on as a state um, as a whole, and they don't break it down um, by uh, by by town either. So that's a little bit that's a little bit frustrating. Thank you. you. Thank you, Andrea. Chairman uh, Councilwoman Shake, go ahead. Thank you. Um, hello, Andrea. Hi. I have a, I have a follow-up question. Um, you know, 
in lieu of being one of the 27 or 25 municipalities throughout the state that is now a recipient of this grant to um, better serve all of our residents in an equitable fashion for vaccine distribution, um, I'm concerned that, you know, on a state level, if, um, if that is correct because of the, uh, you know, metrics in order to meet the requirements in order to be a recipient of the vaccine, or uh, excuse me, of the vaccine distribution assistance, um, that it wouldn't include data collection um, based on race or ethnicity. Um, so that's something that I, I'm curious myself and I'll email DPH because I would assume that they would have um, more detailed metrics um, in order to uh, chart the progress, hopefully. Right. Um, that's number right. one. Um, number two, um, I think Councilman uh, Tavares's request really to, if, if there's a way for us to, you know, break down the data. Um, I remember when they were doing testing in different municipalities, they had like heat maps of how many people were um, accessing um, testing or if it wasn't testing, forgive me, it might have been um, COVID positive cases. So if there's a way for us to, in fact, be able to track within each district, um, you know, the percentage of those who have had a first dose versus a second dose and are now fully vaccinated so that we can hopefully target um, other areas within town, I, I think that that would be helpful. So um, I would yeah, well, for sure. I I totally, I you know, I, I totally, uh, totally appreciate that, and we'll, we'll we'll look into how how you know how well we can try and um, dig into the data. As you know, the the VAMS database is a little bit challenging, um, and then we're only looking at those people that we have vaccinated, um, uh, as opposed to, and it's not you know we're part of a, a broader network of vaccinators, um, so that you know it's it'll it'll be. Um, challenging to see how you know i can get information for, for that but we'll, we'll we'll look into it thank, thank you. you thank you andrea um appreciate that uh any other discussion on this item before we move forward i i do have one more question actually sorry <laughs> uh, for this on this yeah. motion okay yeah. go ahead. um that andrea would probably be best to answer um do you the timeline and forgive me, I didn't I didn't see it in the uh, the resolution of the grant of how long um, this particular outreach or strategy um, will be taking place in Stratford. Is it two months? This, three months? this is extremely uh, condensed. So we have from the grant actually goes from May 1st to August 31st. So we have four months. Oh wow. Yeah, and it's you know the first month we you know we're already in the middle of of, of uh, May and I had to request, you know, an extension because this wasn't even going to be able to go to town council for approval till tonight. Um, but I've already got, you know, the contract starting to roll. I was, you know, conversing with um, Chris Hodgson, the town attorney today, you know, just so we can kind of, you know, get things moving as soon as, as soon as we can. Great. Thank you. Thank you all. Andrea, thank you for your work. Uh, we'll call for a vote. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Motion passed 10 0. Uh, next item on the agenda is item 6.2.3. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, this is Laura Dancho, and I motion to accept item 6.2.3, a resolution regarding taxes transfer into tax suspension and that the town council of the town of stratford authorizes the tax collector to transfer to the tax suspense account these accounts totaling three hundred and twenty five thousand two hundred forty six dollars and eighty one cents for the grand list amounts as shown in our agenda motion by councilman dancho do i have a second to the motion for i can mr can on the second uh any discussion on the item uh dawn if you can just uh elaborate and give us a quick summary of this sure so um this is at um regarding a state statute 12165 that requires towns to 
adjust their accounts receivable by removing tax items um, that we deem most likely uncollectible. So it's it's kind of some housekeeping for our um, accounting that we do usually annually. It wasn't done last year uh, due to COVID. So this amount here represents um, motor vehicle and personal property. It's not real estate because we lean that, so we never put that into suspense. This is just really for an accounting moving out of our accounts receivable into some what you could like into a, a bad debt account. This does not um, remove the ability for us to collect these taxes. If somebody has to register a vehicle and um, we would still be able to collect the tax if they, you know, if they go to motor um, to DMV to try to register their vehicle. Um, so we still are able to collect on this. We do have a collection agency that normally works on these older accounts, but we're just moving them on our books to um, a bad debt account. Thank you, Don. I, and to, you made the point. We didn't do it this past year, but I do remember this is. I remember doing it a couple of years ago. We've been doing this is a pretty much an annual recurring item, right? Mm -hmm. Don, any other questions? Don, did you hear my question? Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I didn't. I thought you were just making a statement. What was oh, the question? Oh no, it, it, it isn't. A, we've been doing this for a while. This is an annual recurring item. Yes. Okay, I just I thought so. Um, any other questions for Ms. Sabo uh, on the item? Uh, Greg Cam. Greg, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I sent these in last week. Don pretty much covered it, but so the if you're going to register a motor vehicle and you have a liability with the town of Stratford, then if you're in any state or just Connecticut, are we able to? uh get our money back if you will no it would so the way it works is somebody is in connecticut and they go to register another vehicle in connecticut they would still see that this is an outstanding tax bill and they would need to come to the town to get a release to give to connecticut dmv this wouldn't relate to any other state it would just be um just it, the relationship is just with the state. Okay. And the last question is the tax suspense items or any old debt, is it sold to third party for collections or do we just retain them and give them a, a fee for helping us with the collections? So we we pay, we don't sell them, no. And we pay based on their collections. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Any other, any other questions for Ms. Seva? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? No opposed, motion passes unanimously 10-0. Next item on the agenda is item 6.2.4. I'll entertain a motion for the resolution. Mr. Chairman, this is Laura Dancho, and I motion to accept item 6.2.4, a resolution regarding extension of municipal, municipal budget adoption deadlines, and that the deadline for the adoption of the annual budget for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2022 is hereby extended to June 30th, 2021. Motion, uh, motion by Councilman Medancho. Do I have a second to that motion? Second, Paul Tavares. Second by Councilman Tavares. Uh, any discussion on this? Pretty straightforward. Gives the municipality well, extension uh, up to June 30th for the governors. Uh, any discussion? Yeah. yeah. Chairman. Uh, Greg Cam. Uh, Councilman Shake first. Go ahead, Kim. Thank you. Um, just for clarification purposes, is there an extended timeline there then? for us as council of when um, we collectively will be having a meeting? Is, does that mean that for us, 
We'll be extending um, potential budget workshops, further workshops, if necessary, um, for another couple of weeks. The resolution, Caitlin, to, to the best of my understanding, is that per the governor's executive order, gives each municipality uh, up to its discretion up to June 30th to pass pass its budget. That's what this is. That's all this is doing. Okay, I'm just trying to understand in terms of a timeline, so you know I can plan, so I can be present. Yeah, as of right this moment, as we're sitting here tonight, there's no date. Um, but again, it gives us the town charter has always been May 12th, and the town attorney can correct me on that if I'm off by a day or two um, to pass the municipal budget. But this allows us up to June 30th. Thank you. Oh, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, any other discussion or questions on the item? Yeah, uh, Greg Cam. Go ahead, Greg. Uh, just to, as a courtesy, is, is the sooner we can schedule any supplement or special meetings, uh, the better it would be for everyone's um, ability to schedule. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion on the item? Okay, hearing none, we'll call for a vote. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Uh, any opposed? No opposed. Motion passes unanimously 10 0. Uh, next item on the agenda under new business is going to be item 7.1. I'll entertain, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Mr. Chairman, this is Laura Dancho, and I motion item 7.1 that the Stratford regarding the Stratford housing plan that the 2021-26 housing strategies for Stratford as prepared by the Stratford housing partnership and unanimous, unanimously supported by the Stratford planning commission a copy of which has been previously provided to each council member B and is hereby adopted as the Stratford housing plan okay <clears throat> excuse me motion by councilwoman Dancho uh, do I have a second Caitlin Shake, I'll second. Chair, if I may. Uh, Councilwoman Shake, I had Mr. Harden on, on the second. Um, we'll open, the, open it up for discussion. Um, so before we get into it, everyone, um, as we, we had previously a public hearing, uh, and thank you, I'd like to thank uh, Susmitha for um, putting that in the works about a month ago. Um, I appreciate she stayed she stayed on me for the time frame to, for the state, so I appreciate it, Smitha. Um, we're going to be every, all the councils were um, given a copy of the entire plan as well as the four page executive summary, which I thought was very helpful personally, and a copy of the letter from uh, Chairman Wilson from the Planning Commission. Um, I, I invited uh, Mr. Silhavy, Chairman Silhavy, for the plan, the zoning chairman as well as the um, chairman for the zoning partnership, excuse me, the housing partnership committee and Mr. Smith are on. So Mr. Silhavy, uh, if you can start off with um, the item here and give us a, a summary of what you guys have done. Okay, good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, Madam Mayor, uh, Honorable Town Council members, uh, and uh, everything that you described is correct. All of the material should have been sent to you, including the letter from uh, myself. And I wanna thank all of you for taking the time to attend uh, the public hearing or the informational session with the council that we had uh, some time ago. I was very pleased to your level of participation. Um, from that meeting until tonight, there has been no changes to the housing plan. Um, it has been adopted um, by the zoning com uh, and endorsed by the zoning commission and the, excuse me, the planning commission and the housing partnership. Um, I am in receipt This is from of, a young man. Hello? Oh. Uh, Mr. Clare, who popped on. Okay. Mr. Phil Havey. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Um, I am in receipt of uh, two questions that were provided earlier today, and we reviewed them with, uh, with the staff, and they were regarding the timeline for implementation and when the report will lead to results. So I have a couple of remarks for that. I'll try to go through them fairly quickly, and uh, then we should be able to move forward. Uh, it is anticipated that the implementation will start upon the adoption by the town council. The Heart Housing Partnership is expected to lead the effort to prioritize the recommendations and coordinate implementation. The Zoning Commission will consider addressing regulatory recommendation. The Planning Commission uh, is already considering updating the POCD, and I'll talk about this in a little bit more detail, to incorporate uh, these changes. Uh, this will support the Zoning Commission regulatory changes. The Housing Authority will continue to address efforts to address assisted housing. 
Uh, the adoption will address uh, the statutory requirement to adopt. I'll talk about that in a second as well. Uh, the adoption will initiate a POC update, which will support regulation changes, grant applications, etc. The adoption will set the stage for zoning regulation changes that will enable housing options. And actual construction of housing depends on market conditions, but it could be facilitated with recommendations from the plan. Uh, as I noted, as far as uh, timing is concerned, and I believe you received a, an also a letter from me uh, regarding the timing of the plan, uh, Stratford is the first town in Connecticut to adopt the housing plan for state statute 8-30J uh, requirements. Following the town council adoption, the town plan of conservation and development, the POCD as we call it, will be amended to include the housing plan as an element of the POCD. The amendment process will follow statutory requirements for amending POCDs, which takes up to 65 days. Once the POCD is amended, it will provide legal standing for updated zoning regulations as recommended in the housing plan. Planning and zoning staff, in coordination with the Planning and Zoning Commission chairs, myself and Commissioner Harold Watson, uh, and the housing partnership members will also develop a further timeline to amend the recommended zoning regulations as discussed. Uh, the general housing recommendations of the housing plan will guide all future development applications made to the planning and zoning boards uh, both during this term and into the future uh, immediately once the housing plan is adopted the housing plan has to be updated once every five years therefore at the end of each five-year period an evaluation of progress will be made and implementation and included in future updates it's important for members to know that uh, plans of this type generally go for about five years the pocd actually has a 10-year lifespan now they are indeed plans. So as situations change, uh, they can be, be amended uh, by following a process set out in statute. Um, so if uh, you know things change uh, during the lifespan of this council, or which is I know is relatively short, but during the next two years, by all means can we go there so that it is it is um, you know reacts to the actual conditions that are uh, are facing the town as we move forward to uh, adopt these things and bring into uh, focus and reality, the goals of the housing plan, which is to seek uh, to provide a variety of housing choices in Stratford for people and households of all ages and characteristics. So I hope all of you have had a chance to review it. I'm certainly happy to uh, entertain any questions. Um, and I know, um, um, and I've enjoyed working with all of you on this and, and the town staff uh, as well, especially Sismita, uh, Glenn Childer, and uh, I would hope that you would adopt this plan and allow Stratford to be the first to adopt its um, housing plan. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I'm happy to entertain any questions. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you, Chairman Sulhavy. Uh, open up to the floor to councilors uh, to ask questions. Councilwoman Sheik, I see you. Thank you. Um, good evening. I'm super excited that we have um, this housing partnership plan in front of us. Um, my question for you, Mr. Sulhavy, I don't have your letter in my uh, pony packet, and I just researched my town email, and I also, I, I don't have that. Um, um, okay, it was submitted. It's on the website, but I will be happy to send it over to you or direct you to uh, where it is to make sure that you have it. Um, Mr. Sulhavy. Other members have not, don't have it. I can... Mr. Chairman, yeah. Mr. Sill, let me just point of clarity. Is this the, yes. the, the note, the, the, excuse me, the letter from last month meeting, or is this the, I know, put it in it's here. This one that's on the housing partnership uh, letterhead addressed to you, Councilman Pia. Yeah. It's dated March 31st, 2021. I also did not receive that email. The letter. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, I will, it is not a long letter. Um, if, with the chair's indulgence, I will just read it very quickly for you. I was just gonna ask, thank you. Yep, okay. go ahead, Mr. Chair Levy. Okay, um, to the t uh, Honorable Christopher J. Pia, Chairman of the Town Council, dear Councilman Pia, attached please find the final report of the Stratford Housing Partnership, which upon adoption will be considered Stratford Housing Plan as required by state statute. This plan was unanimously endorsed at the partnership's meeting of March 25th, 2021, and is being referred to you with a favorable recommendation. This plan represents several months of hard work by members of the partnership to acquire an understanding of Stratford's current and future housing needs and formulate strategies to confront an issue of growing importance. The partnership was assembled as a bipartisan group acting in a nonpartisan capacity. 
Its members included current and former elected officials, members of the public, and citizens with specialized knowledge of our housing needs. Through discovery and discussion, these strategies are presented for your consideration. Despite the pandemic, a considerable effort was made to take in public input and understand the concerns of town residents. To bring these strategies to fruition, those holding office in Stratford now and in the coming years will need to do further work to craft these into concrete actions and meaningful legislation. The Stratford Housing Partnership will continue to be a resource to guide our town along the way. I commend Mayor Laura Hoytick for her leadership and foresight in reestablishing the partnership, and I would like to acknowledge my fellow partnership members for the many hours spent on preparing the plan. In addition, this plan would not have come together without the tireless dedication of our consultant, Glenn Childer, our town planner, Sismita Atola, and our planning and zoning administrator, Jay Habansky. All who contributed to this plan deserve sincere thanks. As you deliberate this plan, the partnership will be happy to provide any clarifications or answers you may have. Through the adoption of this plan, we can work together to move Stratford forward and ensure adequate housing for all. Thank you, Commissioner Christopher Eselhavy, Chairman, Stratford Housing Partnership. Thank you, Mr. Silhavy. Uh, and, and we'll have that make sure we'll make sure we just get a, that email of the copy of the letter sent out to the council again. Uh, any other discussion on the item? Uh, Greg Cam. Go ahead, Greg. Uh, you know, the housing partnership was formed more than 10 years ago anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to thank the mayor for uh, getting an effective team together, uh, town employees, town residents, and as you mentioned, the uh, consultant who was very effective, I thought it just sort of guiding and synthesizing, collating. Uh, you know, a, re a report is not a tangible result, but it does set a direction. And if we, you know, the timeline that Mr. Solhavy mentioned about POCD first, 65 day window, then it goes to the other two commissions. Um, let's just be, you know, maybe a, a sense of urgency, not to trip over ourselves, but to, you know, just demonstrate some progress. So it's a matter mm -hmm. of thanks. And now maybe the hardest part is ahead of us. But thank you all. Any other discussion on the item? Mr. Shilhavy, I'm just going to add in in Sismitha as well. I thought it was, you know, I read I read the plan. Um, I, we attended the the joint special meeting, uh, which was a great idea, which brought together a lot of the you know, planning and zoning council, what have you, in town about a month and a half ago. I thought it was awesome that over a thousand residents participated in the survey. Um, I thought that was a very very good number. Um, so I do appreciate it. you got you went out and you got good hard feedback, which is great. Um, and we set it in motion, we start it, it evolves, it gets organic, it grows over time, and, and we keep going with it because it's a great thing for the town and the community. So I wanna thank everybody involved. Thank you, sir, and you're at, and it's absolutely correct. Now the hard work has to, has to continue. So we'll, I'm prepared to uh, help you guys and with the town in my official role uh, to see us through the process. I thank you very much. Awesome. And any other discussion? Excuse me. Okay. Uh, hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Their votes aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Motion passes unanimously. 10 0. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is item 7.2. I'll obtain a motion. Mr. Chairman, this is Jim Connor from the 8th District. I'd like to make a motion resolved that the award of Town bid number 2021, 2021.31 uh, for boiler replacements for at Flood Middle School to Southport contracting in the amount of 275,000 B and is approved, hereby approved and the mayor B and is hereby authorized to enter into contract for such in form acceptable to the town attorney. Motion by Councilman Kyle. <clears throat> I have a second. Second, Dave Park. Uh, Councilman Harden, uh, Councilman Harden, I have you on the second. Um, any discussion on this? Uh, Chairman Pia? Uh, Mr. Kane, go ahead. Yeah, uh, the question I had directed to Mr. Timiak was regarding this and the item below it, Eli Whitney. Uh, what year were these 
originally bonded for and do these dollar amounts come in under our estimates? Um, Councilor McCann, the uh, original bonding it was in fiscal year 2021. 20, uh, Capital plan was $500,000 was appropriated with the flood with flood being identified in the description as the next school to need replacement. The average boiler replacement is anywhere between $300 to $350,000. The remaining funds go for repairs on boilers and water treatments to maintain and extend the life of the boilers throughout the entire school district. Does that answer your question? Um, we bonded a total of $1 million. Uh, the capital plan was five hundred thousand dollars, including both of these items, Chris. Um, well, for Eli Whitney this year, we're um, this year we're going to propose adding more to it um, okay. for Eli Whitney. That's our hope right. when when the cap when we get everything settled with uh, with the money coming in, we'll we'll make a determination on that got it thank you sir any other discussion on item 7.2 nope okay we'll call for a vote all those in favor please signify by saying aye 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 aye, aye. aye. any opposed no opposed motion passed unanimously 10 0. item 7.3 I have to obtain a motion. Mr. Chairman, this is Jim Connor again. I'll go ahead and make the motion. Councilman Connor. Uh, uh, 7.3 resolved that at the award of town bid number 2021.32 for boiler replacement at Eli Whitney Elementary School to Southport Contracting in the amount of 298,500 be and is hereby approved in the mayor be and is hereby authorized to enter into contract for such in form acceptable to the town attorney. Okay, motion by Councilman Connor. Do I have a second to the motion? Bill O'Brien, second. I have a, I have a second, <coughs> Councilman O'Brien. Uh, any discussion on this, on this item, 7.3? No. Okay, hearing none, we'll call for a vote. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Sure, aye. Please. Any opposed? No opposed. Motion passed unanimously. 10-0. Next item on the agenda. Um, the next item on the agenda is item 7.4. So the next four items are going to require, per the per the agenda, uh, executive session. Mr. Uh, Chairman, this is uh, Bill O'Brien. Yep, Mr. O'Brien, go ahead, sir. I move that we go into executive session to discuss item 7.4, sale of 91 Wood Avenue. Item 7.5, lease of 2520 Main Street. Item 7.6, lease of 952 East Broadway, and item 7.7, .7, conveyance of L.T. Grasso Regional Center as publicity regarding the sale, lease, acquisition, and sites by the town would likely adversely impact the price of such sale, lease, acquisition, and sites. The persons in attendance shall be the members of the town council, town attorney Christopher Hodgson, assistant town attorneys LeClaire, Florick, and Jackson, Mayor Laura Hoydick, Chief Administrative Officer Christopher Timiak, Chief of Staff Michael Downs, and Finance Director John Stabo. Okay, so I have a motion by Mr. O'Brien. Do I have a second to the motion? I'll second. Caitlin Shake. Councilwoman Shake on the second. Uh, any discussion? So uh, I'll just add in it's we've only had a few executive sessions in our virtual world last year. Um, I just like to remind everyone and to those listening. Um, whether it be residents or, or anybody else on the call. The way this is going to work is Ms. Paquette and Mr. Town will move the council and the names listed by Councilman Brian into a closed meeting. Um, the Everyone else will be left in this waiting room. Um, you know, again, we're, we're, we've all been doing the absolute best we can, and I can't be grateful enough of the IT departments not only for the town, but you know, in business going through this. If, if by some chance you do get severed a connection, obviously you absolutely can call back in. Um, the meeting will resume in a recorded way once the council exits executive session and will be repopulated into that waiting room. 
Um, Mr. Town Attorney LeClaire, did I miss anything? You did not, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, so I'm going to ask Ms. Paquette and Mr. Downs if you would like to move the council and the names listed into executive session, please. Argo, are you here? This is Mike. I'm here. Who's that? That's this is Mike Downs. Oh. So uh, we'll proceed to, uh, and I just want to uh, clarify what the council chair said. So the way we need to operate this is we will be uh, removing everyone from the session who is not uh, allowed in the executive session, and we'll be locking the meeting. And then anyone who wants to call back will be placed in a holding pattern uh, in a waiting room until we unlock the session, and then it will automatically populate with those who are called back. Uh, just for a point of clarification. Thank you, Mr. Downs. Um, there's still a few names on here that. I can't seem to leave. Does somebody want to boot me out? I'll try, Margo. That would Thank be you. one of our honors to kick out you as an organ. <laughs> yes. That's, that's just love. Um, let's see. Mike, I still have Mr. Wright, Mr. For, okay, Mr. Wright is gone. Mr. Fredette is on. Mr. Fredette, I still see. Let's see here. I have the three town attorneys. Um, actually, I have the four town attorneys. Mr. Fredette is going to go. All right, let me just do a quick. And do we continue recording in executive session or not, Mike? I don't think no. we should shut the recording off. This conference will now be recorded. All right, uh, Ms. Paquette, if you can begin muting um, the callers um, as you see them. Yeah. That's too loud. Can you hear that? Sure. Yeah. All right, I'm going to make sure. All right, make sure we have brought everybody with us here. Counselors, I believe I see. I see everybody. I have Mr. Tavares, Mr. Perillo, Councilman Sheik, Jim, Greg, Bill O'Brien, Poisson, and Hardin. I believe we have everybody. Uh, the mayor, town attorneys, uh, Ms. Piquette, Mr. Downs. I think we're we're good, Margo. Does that look good to you? Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Jim Connor's having an uh, internet problem. He's trying to get back on. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll continue on here. Um, I know Jim's trying. Um, okay. So thank you all for to the public who's, who's still on. We appreciate your, your patience. We have returned. We're coming out of executive session, so I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, this is Bill O'Brien. I'll make a Mr. motion that we exit executive session where no votes were taken. Laura Dancho, okay. second. Motion by Councilor O'Brien, seconded by Councilman Dancho. Any discussion on exit? No. Nope. Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Any opposed? No opposed motion to exit passes unanimously 10 0. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, Bill O'Brien again. Mr. O'Brien. I make a motion that we authorize the town attorneys to proceed as directed in executive session. Motion by Councilman O'Brien. Uh, do I have a second? Laura Dancho, second. Second by Ms. Dancho. Um, any discussion? No? Okay, seeing none, we'll call for a vote. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion passes unanimously, 10 0. Um, excellent. Thank you all. Um, next item on the agenda is item 7.8.1, Inlands Wetlands. Um, point, as you'll know, this was uh, this was a charter, a town council chair uh, appointment. Um, last month, I appointed Mr. David Chess. There was just a, a small Scribner's error, so per the town attorney's request, we restated it for the record uh, with the Scribner's error corrected. This does not require a vote. 
Just wanted to let everybody know that. Um, next item on the agenda is item 7.8.2. I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Chairman Pia. Yeah. Madam Chair. Chairman Pia. Mr. Can, I've chosen. Go ahead. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm going to make a motion to postpone item 7.8.2 until the June town council meeting. Okay. Motion to <laughs> motion to postpone by Mr. Can until the June council meeting. Is there a second? Caitlin Shake, I'll second. Motion. Uh, excuse me. Uh, second by Councilman Shake. Sorry, my brain stopped. Um, any discussion uh, on Mr. Can's motion? Uh, yeah. Mr. Tavares. Was there any kind of effort to um, have uh, some of these, have some reflection of the demographics of the town, especially when we're talking about the library? Uh, you know, it looks, you know, we know you guys have the dominance and power, but uh, was there any, you know, this looks uh, exclusive instead of inclusive. So I just want to know, was there any effort to have any bipartisan folks on here or some folks that reflect the, the demographics of our town? Is that, is the question, Mr. Pierce, the question? It's, it's here just a myself? question. I mean, I'm not going to pick on any gentleman here. One, I know for 40 years, our daughters are best friends, but I'm just looking at it simply from um, the perspective of more uh, reflection of the town. It's sure. So I'll, yeah. Let me cut you off. I'll, uh, happy to weigh in on this. Um, so, so for, for the record, and we can all discuss. And Mr. Leclerc, uh, I asked to um, look at it, and we'll give it a, uh, an explanation as well. The bottom line is the current makeup or, uh, makeup of the library board today, as it stands. Um, there are 10 seats filled, um, of which 10, 11 are allowed. Um, of the 10 seats, eight of, eight of them are Democratic registered uh, individuals, um, of which six are women and four are men. Um, frankly, never really, you know, that's that's not at the forefront. Putting quality people in any border commission, on, you know, in town is the most important thing. I think we would all agree with that. Um, the way that the town charter, excuse me, uh, the way that one of the state statute reads, and, when, and, and this came about because a few months ago this came across, uh, my desk, as I've been asking Town Attorney LeClaire as new appointments arise or, or terms expire, um, just to do a quick snapshot of, hey, are we in compliance? Are we looking good? Um, it was brought to my attention by the Town Attorney. Um, and in the interest of open line of communication, I reached out and had a nice conversation with the president, uh, excuse me, the chairman of the library board, Mr. Mike Lloyd. Um, we talked, we had a great conversation about it. I expressed to him my concern that the Town Attorney advised um, and he thanked me for it. Um, he also at that time th uh, asked uh, if we would consider at that time reappointing Mr. Patrimus, Don, who I know as well from Rotary Days with you, Paul. Um, we did that. Um, I had no problem with that. We did that. We moved it forward because he had indicated to me that he liked them. He was the planned treasurer. So we voted on Don. Um, and then I told him, I said, I need you, we need to work on this over the next few months because we need to get it in state statute compliance. I'll let Mr. McClair hit that. Uh, and then the bottom line, over the past few months, more applications from people who wanted to sit on it. Um, so we made the, I made the determination to, to put it on the town council agenda tonight to bring this back into compliance. Um, and that's how we arrived at where we are. Mr. O'Claire, did I, if you'd like to weigh in? No, you are correct, Mr. Chairman. There is a state statute requiring minority representation on all uh, boards and commissions of the town. Uh, and appointed by the town, minority uh, in the sense uh, uh, of members of a political party. Having uh, eight members of the same political party of the 11 violates the, the minority representation statute. Uh, therefore, the max you can have from any one party is seven uh, on this board. Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you. Compliment Sheikh, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> Mr. LeClaire, um, if you could, I had emailed um, you and I believe Mr. Hodgson um, and I think Mr. Pia was on the email just inquiring, you know, where, because I had looked through myself because of the email that we had received um, out of concern. Um, and I had forwarded to you where, I think it's the town code, um, the only citation, um, 
that had to do with uh, the oversight of our Stratford Library Board. So if you could please um, email the council all of that information, just so we could actually see it in front of us before we make um, any decision, that would be helpful. Um, and I would also weigh in, um, even though obviously I second, um, you know, considering that the council received an email um, from the person who is being listed to be taken off of the board um, out of concern with their years of dedication um, to our community through our library, that we do consider um, tabling this until June to further look into it. So, Mr. LeClaire, do you have, um, can you cite the town of the state statute, please? I, I could tell you that the state, there are two uh, to respond to uh, Council uh, Woman's Shake's comment. You did cite the correct section of the charter. Uh, and that's all you're going to find is that one section of the charter which empowers you as the town council to make the appointments. The statute you look at is 9-167 small letter A, which calls for the minority representation. Uh, it has the maximum number of members of any board, commission, committee, or similar body of a political subdivision, town of Stratford being a political subdivision of the state, whether elective or appointed. You have to look down at the numbers, the total membership in one column, and then the maximum from one party in the second column. You have 11 members, therefore no more than two thirds can be of the same political party. Uh, in this case, that would be uh, seven. Eight would be too high, it would be more than two thirds. So that's the authority for that. So Please. just, for, can I ask a follow-up yep. question? Yep. Um, so how do we i don't i honestly i don't know what the political affiliation breakdown is of of the you i heard you say that we have currently eight democrats um and then what was the continued sure currently as it stands right now caitlin there's 10 seats filled of the 11. there are eight um registered democrats there's one independent and there's one registered republican okay so this is different than when we have, I'm just asking for clarification. This is different from when we have, you know, a primary election where you have to be um, affiliated with either a Democrat or Republican in order to vote in, in either or this is a different. No, no, there's, there's two distinctions. One is, first, let's talk about the council. You're elected by district. So minority representation does not apply to the council. You can all be of the same party because you're elected by districts. Otherwise, it wouldn't be unfair. It would be, it would be unfair. Okay. Uh, when you're running for office, you, you can run uh, either a Republican, Democrat, Green, Independent. Uh, there's a number of a Connecticut party. There's a number of legitimate registered parties in the state of Connecticut. You can also run as an unaffiliated individual. The statute merely says that no more than in the case of, of the library board, no more than seven can be of the same political party. So you can have uh, 11 members, all of them unaffiliated, and that's fine. But you can't have 11, you can't have 11, quote, independent party members, 11 R's, 11 D's, 11 green, 11 ACP's, or anything like that. And it does and not require, yeah, yeah, it does not require members to be of them any minority party. As long as you don't have more than seven of the same party, it doesn't matter what the other four are as long as they're not on the same party as the other seven. And how long um, with the current ratio breakdown has the library been operating with such of membership? And, and Caitlin, to, to that question, I've been chair for a year and a half. I, I, I don't know, it could be three years, it could be 10. I'm not aware. The bottom line is when things are starting to come across my desk, um, I feel it's my responsibility to, to look at everything and, and that's how this came about. When I noticed it, I sent, I asked the town attorney's opinion on it. He and he brought forward the explanation tonight. So, and just to be just to be clear too, um, we're not kicking anybody off any board. There's a term that expired, and in order to bring the board back in compliance from the state statute, we're simply <laughs> any other discussion on the item. Chris, it's Greg Can. Go ahead, Greg. Um, you we're still discussing the postponed to date certain, but we're, we're gotten a little broader. Uh, 
I'd like to uh, address uh, three questions to Attorney LeClaire. Go ahead. <clears throat> uh, so we've, you know, I've written about Carrie Monticelli, Monticelli, excuse the name pronunciation, and how uh, she has demonstrated the commitment, the dedication, the qualifications, etc. cetera. Uh, so it would be, the board members seem to believe she belongs with them in continued service. So the first question to attorney LeClaire is, if Ms. Monticelli, excuse the, the pronunciation, uh, changed her party affiliation from D to anything else, would that satisfy the state statute if she was, quote, nominated to be renewed as a member of the library board? And I believe so. Now she would not be a member of the, in this case, the Democratic Party. Okay. Uh, this uh, second question goes to the ethics. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of stipulations, quid pro quos, uh, conflicts of interest. But if two family members, if there's no condition such as quid pro quo that may explicitly apply to them, is there any restriction in the ethics or the charter code, et cetera, that would prevent two family members from serving together on a board or commission? Having the two members on, you know, of course, just for, for everyone else on, on the council, you know, we have a code of ethics and that's adopted under section 9.3.2 of the town of Stratford charter. And the code itself is in article four of the code. It begins at section 5-24. It's something you all should read if you haven't already. Uh, it's important. It talks about conflicts of interest. It talks about self-dealing, uh, prohibited transactions. I don't believe there's anything in there that addresses uh, a couple or uh, two related people being on the same board, though, Mr. Can. Okay. And uh, Section 2.2.2 .2 of what? Of the charter speaks to the qualifications of appointees. <laughs> and it reads that, I apologize, uh, such appointments be made on the basis of candidates' general experience and qualifications. The nominator of any such candidate for appointment shall state the experience and qualifications of the nominee at the time of the nomination. Now, in our packet, we did get one resume, but the other two that are listed here, we did not. And aside from the, the board members desire to find a mechanism to keep Carrie on the board. Uh, the fact that we don't have the qualifications for two of the three candidates is another argument for postponing this decision until the next council meeting. What section are you reading, Mr. Cannon, again, I'm sorry, of the charter? Uh, I just have 2.2.12. So, Greg, Greg, let me jump in. For as long as I've been here, we've, I believe this started under Councilman Connor's um, chairmanship as well. Forgive me if I'm mistaken on that, but as long as I've been chair, I felt, <clears throat> excuse me, I felt that it's important for renewing membership on committees or commissions for volunteers, as well as appointing new people, that we include an application in every pony. We've done that. Um, I think it's been invaluable. Um, at no point has it been made clear that a resume is required. In fact, we probably only had a handful of them. That's up to the discretion of the individual sending in the resume. Um, if an individual sends it in, I send it to Margo or Margo receives it, whomever, and it's included in the pony. Um, so I do disrespectfully, I do disagree with you that just because it's not a resume, it's not, it doesn't require a vote. It doesn't need a vote. Uh, I'm just reading the charter. We'll wait for Attorney LeClaire to catch Mr. up. LeClaire. Can you answer Mr. Kahn's question? So what is, your, what is your specific question about qualifications? Well, since, since we, that the appointments will be made on the basis of experience and qualifications, 
and the nominator of such candidate for appointment shall state the experience and qualifications of the nominee at the time of nomination. Okay. Since, since, since that has not been done, I'm referring to it as a second justification to delay. Well, you, well, you haven't gotten there yet. No one's made a motion to approve the people. If the motion has been made, the person who makes the motion to uh, appoint, in this case, Mr. Smith, Mr. or I assume it's Mr. Smith, uh, that Mr. Smith, Mr. Llewellyn, and Mr. Forrester can at that time express the qualifications as part of the motion or during the discussion. You're on a motion to postpone right now, so no one's had that opportunity to put forth the qualifications in addition to what you have in your packet. So in, and just to remind everyone, this is this is on the motion is on 7.8.2a right now to postpone. So, Greg, do you have any further discussion on this? No, thank you. Okay. So, any other further discussion? Okay, so the motion again was to um, a vote of I would be to postpone to the June meeting. That was Mr. Um, Can's uh, motion, original motion. A vote of no would uh, be to um, not accept the postponement. So all those in favor, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three, uh, Mr. Tavares. Can. Wait, wait. This uh, I'm sorry, repeat that, uh, Mr. Chairman. No problem, Mr. A, vote, a vote in the affirmative, a vote of aye, would be to pass Mr. Can's motion of, of um, postponing to the June meeting. I vote aye. Mr. Yes. Tavares, aye. Councilwoman Shake protests, and Mr. Yes. Can, I assume? Yes. Okay. Uh, all those opposed? No. 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 Okay. Motion fails three to seven. Um, back to the original item, 7.8.2, item A, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Um, Mr. Mr. Hardin, did I hear you? Yep, Mr. Hardin, uh, do you want me to read the whole uh, thing or no? If you can, sir, please, for the record. It is resolved at the police death of Broad Street, we hereby are reappointed as a member of the Stratford Library Association Board with the term expiring December 31st of 2023. Motion to approve uh, by Councilman Hardin. Do I have a second that? Second by Jim Connor. Second by Mr. O uh, excuse me, second by Mr. Connor. Uh, any discussion uh, on this item? Mr. Chairman. This motion, I should say. Um, was that you, Caitlin? I'm sorry. Yes. Go ahead. Um, just for clarification, uh, Mr. Tony Smith, is he a Democrat or Republican? He, he is a registered Democrat. It's, uh, his application was included in, in the pony. Okay. Um, so then my follow-up question is, um, considering that Carrie is um, seeking reappointment, why would we not give Carrie the reappointment and then uh, put Mr. Smith on? Mr. Mr. Smith is also seeking reappointment. He's a current serving member having his term expired. So he is allowed to stay, but Carrie is not. Was there any other discussion between the board or with the president that took place as sure. to shooting? Yep. A couple, like I said, a bunch of applications did come through. Um, and then based off the based off the resumes and based off the, the history, I know Ms. Monticelli had emailed myself as well, as did Mr. Smith. Um, I made a determination to put Mr. Smith's name and reappoint him. Um, he's, he's the chair of the economics department at Yale. I felt qualifications were important for everybody. Not to say, and this has nothing to do with not saying Ms. Monticelli is not qualified. Um, you know, we, we strive as a community to have volunteers come forward and volunteer. That's a great thing, and we appreciate everybody. I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican or Green Party, um, but at the end of the day, we have to fill X amount of roles with under a state statute, and that's what we're voting on tonight. Any other discussion on the item? Yes, Greg Can. Go ahead, Mr. Can. Um, excuse me if I phrase this wrong. Um, I'm going to amend item A to replace Tony Smith's name as a Democrat with Carrie Monticelli's name as a Democrat. 
uh, noting that Tony does have qualifications, and but his his family already has one member, although that's not material to any ethics, etc. Uh, that six members of the board, including Republicans, have validated that Carrie's contribution is valuable, effective, and that she should remain an active member on the board because she's getting the job done. So that's the amendment to item A, replace Tony Smith with Carrie Monticelli. So great, just so we're clear for the record, you're, you're making a motion to amend item A to replace Tony's name with Carrie's name, correct? Yes. Okay, motion by Mr. Kahn to amend. Uh, I'll enter, um, is there a second? I'll second. Second by Ms. Jake. Uh, any discussion on the amendment only? No? Okay, we'll call uh, a vote for the amendment um, for Mr. Cannon's motion. Uh, excuse me. Motion to amend would be uh, averting the phone, a vote in the affirmative, I apologize, it's getting late, is to uh, replace Mr. Smith's name for item A with Carrie, Mr. Monticelli's name. A vote no would be to leave Mr. Smith's name. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three, three ayes. Uh, no? No. 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 Your no. <laughs> votes, no. Motion fails uh, three to seven. Back to the original item uh, in, under discussion. Is there any further discussion on the original item, on the original motion? Mr. Chairman, this is Laura Danchow. I would like to point Ms. out Danchow. that Mr. Ms. Smith is, is actually a PhD and is very well qualified to serve on the library board. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other discussion on the original motion? Mr. Chairman. Ms. Uh, Councilman Shea. Thank you. Um, so just for clarification, um, Mr. Smith um, is related to someone who currently already sits on the board, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, um, and Carrie is a teacher. Is that correct? She is. So she is also therefore qualified for the record. Absolutely. No one said she wasn't. Thank you. No problem. Any, Mr. Uh, Chair, if I may. Any, any, Mr. Harding, go ahead. So again, uh, you know, the attorney said that there were no issues with, uh, you know, spouse or family relations being on the, the board. And needless to say that, you know, both candidates are both highly qualified. And, uh, but we have the votes for Tony. And I understand that, uh, you know, Caitlin Chick may have her, you know, ideas and views about it. But as we know that the vote wins uh, the, the, the decision. And again, both candidates are highly qualified. And, uh, you know, and I support Tony, you know, um, you know, to be on the board. Is there any further discussion on the original motion? Mr. Chairman. Councilman the vote. Thank you. Um, I had Councilman part, of, part of the reason why, you know, some of us are asking so many questions is because, as far as I know, because we were all CC'd on the email, that we had received emails for supporting Carrie to be reappointed. So just for clarification, there I didn't receive any emails to support Mr. Smith Mr. Llewellyn or Mr. Forrester. So that is the reason why some of us are inquiring and asking so many questions because as a board member and as community members and as residents here, they too are concerned. So we're trying to reflect that in the process. Thank you. No problem, Caitlin. And for the record, as we stated before, this motion, this vote is purely on Mr. Smith being reappointed, nothing else. And he's as we've said, everyone is qualified. We have to make it a Hey, this is a good problem that we have a lot of people that want to be on, on, on a certain amount of seats. And it's our job as elected representatives to determine those seats. So um, with mm -hmm. that, I'll call this motion for a vote. We've had a good discussion on it. Um, all those in favor of approving uh, mm -hmm. 8.2 and appointing Mr. Smith, please signify by saying aye. 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 Correct can aye. votes no. Chair votes aye. <laughs> any, oppo any opposed? I heard Mr. Can no. Any, oh, any? No. Mr. Tavares, Mr. Councilman Shake, no. Uh, motion passes seven to three. 
Um, next item on the agenda is item 7.8.2B. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, this is Bill O'Brien. Mr. O'Brien. I move that Alan Llewellyn of Huntington Road be and is hereby appointed a member of the Stratford Library Association to the expired seat of Kerry Monticelli with a term that expires December 31st, 2023. Thank you, Count. Excuse me. Second thank you. by Dave Harden. I have a second by Councillor Harden. Uh, any discussion on Mr. Llewellyn's uh, appointment? Uh, Gregory Can. Mr. Can, go ahead. Uh, with respect, I'll refer back to 2.2.12, qualification of appointee. Uh, the nominator did not provide any evidence of experience or qualifications. And as the appointment is not immediately required, uh, I will ask that this be pended until such information is provided or until uh well that's it uh we, we have to follow the charter and is there a motion mr can is there a motion uh attorney leclerc since the experience and qualifications of the nominee was not presented at the time of the nomination that seems to me a technical violation of the charter your opinion please i think you raised a a, a uh, point of information i think that can be corrected right now by uh someone indicating the qualifications of in this case mr Llewellyn. Well, they Either referring chose... back to his resume or not uh it'd be up to the well, chairman yeah, to chair, if I may. They chose. They chose not to provide it. So if you, if you, even after our discussion regarding the charter, the nominator chose not to provide the background, which we'd already noted was missing. I mean, if the Democrats don't get a chance to appoint their own representatives of a commission or board, at least the majority should provide the substance to demonstrate the qualifications. And even with that knowledge, they chose not to. Mr. Ken, I'm gonna jump in right now. For the last year and a half, we've approved pretty much unanimously on this 10 council, 10 person council, based off the applications provided. Just now, this is the first time you've ever asked for more further qualifications. Here are some qualifications I'm having put forth on Mr. Llewellyn. He is single-handedly probably one of the top five people most responsible for building based off his engineering background, instructional engineering background, Stratford High School. He's well documented, he's a past councilman. I have profound respect for him, and I think he'd be perfect on the library board, being he's been wanting to go on it for years. And now by putting him on, it brings the, the majority, the Democratic majority under the state statute, which is why we're doing this, to get back in compliance, back to seven. I, I absolutely think he's qualified, and I stand behind that. Uh Chair yes. I, I second that. Dave Harden. There was no, there was, you're seconding the statement. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing to the statement that you made. So I'm in support of Mr. Alan Llewellyn and uh, all of us know him. You know, we know him by working on a staff hire project and some of the change orders and voting on it. So I, I, I understand what Greg is saying that there were some people who, who provided you know, additional information because maybe they weren't known by certain individuals, but Alan Llewellyn, again, you know, he's a dedicated, you know, resident to the community and we all know him. Anything, any, any other discussion on the item? Mr. Chairman. Councilman Shake. Um, does Mr. Llewellyn sit on any other board commissions throughout the town currently that you know of? He's on building needs. He's he's the vice chairman of building needs. He's the chairman of the Stratford High Renovations Committee. He's a former councilman and a former zoning commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Poisson. Any other discussion on the item? Well, of course, uh, this is Bill O'Brien. Sure, While on council, you served on many committees, as we all do. And he's a, a, a very loving father of a special need child and Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Pia, thank you, sir. Um, just short, uh, it's not to question Mr. Llewellyn's dedication 
and our knowledge of his experience and qualifications. It's, uh, it, I'll go back to Paul Tavares' statement that we, if we keep recycling the same people, we will not have boards and commissions that represent the diversity of the town of Stratford. Does that and mean you're not going to run, Greg? You're an old white guy like the rest of us. Yeah. <laughs> Is that possible? Excuse me. Hold on. Mr. Point of order. Hold on. Time, time. Mr. Kean has a floor. Hold on. Greg. Wow. Greg. Yes. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Um, old white guys, we've carried the weight for a long time. And any party any leadership, we should look for candidates that represent the diversity. That's the feedback I got from the six members of the board that I spoke with. Mm -hmm. And that may come later, but this is an opportunity to do it now if we decide to pend this decision until next council meeting when we can find qualified people of a diverse background that are willing and able and qualified to serve. Nothing against Gavin, nothing against Alan, just a hope for more diversity and representation. That's it. Greg, your point's noted. I will, hold on. Greg, your point's noted. I will say to you, and I'm sure you'll be happy to hear this, three months ago, uh, when I spoke with the, with the chairman of the, of the association, we had this conversation um, and I don't let, things move, I don't let things go. As you know me, I like to keep things moving effective and efficiently. So no, and I, like I said, I did receive a few applications. We've decided to move forward and nominate someone and put it to a vote. Um, actually, I'm, I didn't even know this because again, the application that we send out doesn't ask for uh, you know, race and background. And, and if, quite frankly, at the end of the day, I, I agree with you, a, a good representation of the town of us is important. And you, you know it's just as I. It's hard to get good people to step forward to volunteer in today's world. That's a fact, a Democrat or a Republican. Um, if good people step forward. I do believe in quality. And, and Alan, Mr. Wall is somebody that the town should embrace putting on a board like this. So is there any other further discussion on this? I just wanted to point out, this is Laura Dancho, that the diversity in this case is not gender or um, race related, it's party related. So that's, and I'm, I'm sure that Ms. Monticelli is, is a wonderful person and has contributed a lot to the library board, but it's not personal to her. This is just to bring us back into compliance. Any other discussion on this item? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. Uh, all those in favor uh, by voting aye will be to, to approve Mr. Llewellyn. Um, by voting no would be to say no to them. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? No. Mr. Tavares, Mr. Can, um, Councilman Shake, you said no? Correct. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Got it. Okay. Uh, motion, excuse me, uh, motion passes seven to three. Um, next item is 7.8.2, item C. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair. Uh, Councilman Perillo. I'd like to see uh, Gavin Forrester from Orchard Street be appointed as a member of the Stratford Library Association, which expires on 31st, 2023. Okay, mo excuse me, motion by Councilman Perillo. Uh, I'll, do I have a second? Second by Dave Harden. Second by Councilman Harden. Uh, any discussion on Mr. Forrester? Uh, Greg Can. Go ahead, Greg. Um, I'll go back to 2.2.2. .2 um, if the nominator could discuss the qualifications and experience. Sure. Um, and in this case, Mr. Forrester willingly sent forth his resume, which was included. It's quite extensive. Um, Mr. Forrester's expertise is in financial and accounting, and I think he'd be a great asset to the board. Thank you, Mr. Pia. Any other discussion on the item? No? Okay. Uh, Chris, just, uh, ahead, you know, we're, we're, we're starting to repeat ourselves. Yep. Uh, there's, there's various mechanisms that we could pursue to solve the balance of eight Democrats, 
uh, on this 11 member board. Um, I've proposed a couple of them. Uh, so I just, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor of approving get Mr. Forrester, uh, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Aye. There votes aye. Any opposed? Um, Paul Tavares. Mr. Tavares opposed. Anyone else? Craig no? Cam. Mr. Cam's opposed? Okay. All right. Uh, motion passes eight to two in favor of Mr. Forrester. Um, thank you all for that. Next item in the agenda is item 7.8.3. Uh, I'll entertain a motion for approval. This is Laura Dancho. I motion to approve Christine Doolin of Lordship Road that she be and is hereby appointed as an alternate member of the Zoning Board of Appeals to the resigned seat of David D'Ocilio with the term that expires January 2024. Motion by Councilwoman Dancho. Do I have a second? Second, Bill O'Brien. Okay, seconded by Councilman O'Brien. Uh, any discussion on Ms. Doolin? Uh, her application was provided as this, uh, as stated in the agenda. Uh, this was a, a resigned seat um, from a couple months ago by uh, Mr. Desilio. Most of us know him. Um, any discussion? Just could somebody comment on qualifications and experience? Yep. Um, Ms. Doolin had approached um, myself uh, as well as emailed in to Ms. Paquette uh, some months back expressing interest in, uh, in the position. Um, I discussed whether she has, has background in it, she wanted to be more involved in the community. Um, this was, I kept it open for a couple months, no one else had submitted in, um, so therefore I decided to put it on and it, like we're saying, Greg, this is somebody who had never come forward before and wanted to get more involved and I felt it was a good opportunity. Any other discussion on the item? No? Okay. We'll put it to a vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Greg, aye. Greg votes yes. Aye. Um, chair votes aye. Any opposed? No opposed? Okay. Motion passes 10, uh, motion, uh, unanimous motion passes 10-0. Um, next item is 7.8.4, Planning Commission. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Laura Dancho, and regarding item 7.8.4, I, I motion to that it be resolved that Paul Aurelia of Barber Lane be and is hereby appointed as an alternate member of the Planning Commission to the expired seat of Jenner Tres Tre Tremisanti with a term that expires January 2024. Okay, motion to approve, um, made by Ms. Dancho. Do I have a second? Second, Bill O'Brien. Second by Councilman O'Brien. Uh, any discussion? So Mr. Rillia's uh, application was provided. Um, he is a very involved person, grew up in the, in the community, retired police officer, as well as works at Skiskorski, and has expressed a lot of interest in, in understanding the, the future planning. Um, again, uh, the only application he received in the last few months on this, this was uh, Ms. Trem Tremisani. Um, her seat expired, I believe, in January. I don't have my notes in front of me. Uh, and again, somebody new to the new new to the new to the thing, and wanted to put them put them forth. So, any other discussion? Okay. Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Correct aye. votes. Yeah. Chair votes aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Motion passes 10-0. Uh, next item on the agenda is 7.8.4, item B. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, this is Jim Connor from the 8th District. Uh, resolved that Carrie L. Witham of Broadbridge Avenue B and, and is hereby appointed as alternate member to plan a commission to the resigned seat of Sandra Zalik with a term that expires January 2022. Uh, motion by Mr. Connor. Do I have a second to the motion? Second by Dave Harden. I second by Mr. Hardin. I heard you pop up there, sir, uh, for discussion. Ms. Whittam's application was provided. Uh, Ms. Whittam is uh, an unaffiliated voter. Uh, again, had approached regarding getting involved. Um, her background's extensive in finance, having worked at um, GE, I believe, back in the day. 
Uh, any other further discussion? No? Okay. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposed? Motion passes 10 0. Uh, next item on the agenda uh, confirmation of mayoral appointments, item 7.8.5. Um, item A, um, I don't believe, Mr. Tom Turner, we do not need a vote on this, correct? These were mayoral appointments, uh, as men, made mentioned before by Mayor Hoydick. That's correct. Okay. So we do not need a, vo a vote on this. Uh, I, I think we need a motion to confirm them, though, I believe, Mr. Chairman. Oh, gotcha. Thank you. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to confirm item 7.8.5A, uh, as men mentioned before by Mayor Boyd. Uh, this is my motion to um, confirm item 7.8.5A. Motion by Councilwoman Danchon. Do I have a second to the motion? Craig Can. Seconded by Mr. Can. Uh, any discussion? No. Okay. Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposed. Uh, motion passed unanimously, 10-0. Uh, last item is 7.8.5, item B. I'll take a motion to uh, accept the motion. That's stated by the mayor. Uh, is there a motion? Mr. Aye. Chairman, Jim Connor, I'll make a motion to uh, accept the mayor's uh, reappointment uh, nomination. Excellent motion by Mr. Connor. Any, uh, is there a second? The motion is for the okay, reappointment okay. and the appoint. It should be for the reappointment of Ryan Aaron House and the appointment of Megan Merwin, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Connor, if you can restate it for the time. Okay, I'll read. I'll read it again. Uh, that the mayor's reappointment of Ryan Aaron House and appointment of Megan Merwin as a full member of the historic <laughs> district commission B and is hereby confirmed. Motion by Mr. Connor. Do I have a second? Laura Dancho, second. Second by Dan. I, I got Ms. Dancho first. She beat you. <laughs> any, dis any discussion on the item? Nope. Okay. Uh, no discussion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. aye. Any, any opposed? No opposed. Motion passes unanimously 10 0. Motion to adjourn. Mr. Poisson. Motion to adjourn by Mr. Poisson. Do I have a second? Second, Bill O'Brien. Second, Mr. O'Brien. I'm a second. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Their votes aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, everyone. You have a wonderful evening. Aye.